welcome to india's most comprehensive learning platform by juice exam prep and also special welcome to each and every sincere student of ece as well as electrical and instrumentation student who are going to appear for gate 2023 i'm very sure many of you might have done tremendous hard work throughout the year and of course those students who have done uh, all the preparation you might be uh, waiting to start pyq series or else you want to appear for pyq questions or else you want to revise the pyq questions right based on the demand of the students we at byju's exam prep came up with this new and wonderful series this is a big bit series but very very useful series because many of the toppers might told you that pyqs are, is like it's a ramaban right so it's a last weapon that you are having in your hand so utilize it and make you you have to be very wise to utilize this and anyway we all are here and we will be helping at each and every point of the discussion so please be with us till the end of this whole series i'm very sure you will going to get a lot of benefit out of it and even if you have already solved the pyq question then also you can appear here because we will be addressing the questions as well as concept so there might be some concepts you might not understood and left in the pyqs at least those concepts will be revised now so therefore i sincerely request every one of you pay utmost attention even if it takes two hours of time or two and a half hours time don't worry about the time because ultimately this is the weapon that you require to clear the examination not only to clear the examination even if you want to top the exam you cannot leave the pyq series so it's one of the golden series so please be with us right kamal pratap singh good evening sir good evening pratap yes of course you all can see we will be able to address in fact we are planning to address 2018 2019 2020 2021 and 2022 almost five years uh, questions and of course we will also discuss in favor of ec student electrical student and instrumentation students so as i said we are going to start the series from today onwards 18th december of course this is the first session so i welcome every one of you to the platform let's start this wonderful journey together and enjoy the journey together clear ashok good evening and benerji good evening and sachin good evening uh, shriyansh good evening narasimha good evening so guys please respond in the comment section are you really excited for this pyq series if so please mention that naturally your response will give a lot of energy for us right hello sir yes yes kartik rajeshi uh, <laughs> good evening well this is one more series which is parallelly going on gate amos series because some students they have demanded the crash course if you are interested to attend for the crash course which is already ongoing please visit the uh, youtube channel you will be finding the crash courses related to all subjects of ec and electrical and instrumentation students of course it started from long back it's still continuing right so those students who want to know about myself in fact of course it is obvious right so some of the students may be very interested to know about me right so you can find this slide all the way this is myself panindra all put together i have an experience of 12 years in guiding esc students as well as gate students of course till now i have guided more than 50000 students and i am very good in control system circuit theory and measurements right so guys let's get into the topic so oh, wow wonderful response i am seeing in the chat box please let me know are you guys really waiting for pyq series or not if so please respond in the comment section because this is a lengthy session so you should motivate me and i will motivate you so the energy should continuously pass between you and me so please respond in the comment section well moving ahead before starting the session i want to inform a very quick notice to you that is we are coming up with a mega workshop on 18th december 12 30 pm and you, those students it is mainly for 2024 students if anybody want to prepare for 2024 so seriously of course rakesh sir will going to present wonderful tips as well as a complete guidance to the 2024 students well without anything let's get into the topic right so these are the uh, you know the overall topics in the entire subject right so when you see the control system as a subject yes rajasri i know it's done but even then you can go through the uh, you know recorded session so you will going to get the tips once again right so you are you <laughs> right right rashians thank you very much even i forgot to mention you you mentioned that in the comment session right great great thank you very much rashians right so these are the main topics of the control system syllabus even if you are from ec background 
or electrical background or instrumentation background with my past experience of 12 years i can say you will be having an average of minimum eight marks right an average of eight marks from this particular subject i can't say sometimes it may be 10 marks sometimes it may be seven marks it it varies but on an average you can expect eight marks from control system and every sincere student without missing this particular subject they prepare like anything so you must also prepare well in advance right so thank you very much rajeshri right so going ahead so these are the topics what we do is we will try to cover all the questions of ec and electrical from 2018 to 2022 so five years session we will going to complete i have I've made a different plan instead of discussing year wise I put it in a topic wise. So first we will see the number one topic that is block diagram reduction on the signal flow graph obviously that is the first chapter right. So all five years of questions which were asked from this particular topic we will complete that and then we will move to the next topic. So if I go in this way then automatically you will understand which is very very important topic where you need to focus more and how to prepare this topic and even our explanation in fact uh, my explanation also will be in a sequence clear right so let's get into the first question of the day uh, from the block diagram and those students who are very quick in answering please answer to the question so let's start the first question of course every question that we are going to discuss in today's session is get previous year question so even if it is a very easy question appreciate the question even if it is very difficult question then appreciate the person who designed the question paper right so let's get into the first question for the closed loop system shown below so please see here shown below the transfer function e of s by r of s is dash probably this is the simplest question i can see in the paper 2021 from control system guys please respond fast it's a simple question right so you require e of s by r of s how to do this one so if it is c of s i could say that this is c of s here so let me call this as c and if it is c i am very sure that this will be ch and this will be equal to ch those students who attended my block diagram reduction this is a cakewalk in fact everyone you must answer this one why i am not seeing any response from you please make it fast guys every one of you be fast so e of s could be written as equal to r of s minus c of s into h you might be feeling that this is so easy so you need not to answer it should not be like that easy question or difficult question both we must answer because it is a previous year question we have to respect that right we must respect every pyq question as i said if the question is easy appreciate yourself if the question is difficult then appreciate the person who designed the question paper right so c of s is equal to g into e of s obviously c of s is equal to g into r of s and minus c of s into h right <laughs> c of s into h uh, right so therefore i can say c of s you can take outside it will become like one plus g into h and right side you are having like g into r of s probably it is the simplest question for the serious students but i can't do anything because it is given in the previous year paper right so as i promised it's my responsibility to discuss all the questions from 2018 to 2022 right so what would be the first option so obviously the first question first option option a is the correct answer for this question as i was saying today we have to be together almost for long session two to two and a half hour session i'm mentally preparing you be with me we will see all the questions and even i will explain the concept also in between that right a is the correct answer let's get into the next question what of what here ec 2021 right 2021 so the block diagram of a feedback control system is shown in the figure what would be the transfer function that is y of s by x of s of the system is dash now my suggestion is whenever we have a function like this never try to think in this way that right i need to apply that rule of the block diagram i need to apply this rule of the block diagram don't think in that way go with the plain mind and see the situation and understand the demand of the question and apply the basics confidently you will get the answer right so <laughs> now right 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 okay we'll see no problem uh, all the way we'll get everything here so first of all try to understand clearly here so we have y of s here so therefore i could be saying what is going to be the transfer function of this one all the way so the transfer function written as easily g1 divided by 1 plus g1 into h this is easy because this is a negative feedback system and it's very easy to get that answer right so any answer oh why why sir they are asking e of s by c of s right 
no 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 it is e of s by r of s so please see here i think e of s by r of s maybe they have mistakenly mentioned that but it is usually it is it has to be e of s by c of s clear e of s by c of s right if it is e of s by r of s then you need to convert the c of s okay so yes now yes yes e of s by yes yes e of s by c of s we require okay now let's move on to the next question here clear tarun is it clear such as three is it clear to you is it clear or not please respond in the comment section right that is what exactly we got e of s by c of s that is equal to g of s by one oh one second one second i think i need to change this one right yeah. oh sorry we require e of s right so you are right absolutely you are right <coughs> so because what we got here is i am extremely sorry guys so many students are blindly answering here so such as three is the only one who answered it correctly because the question is about e of s by r of s right e of s by r of s so please go back to the previous question sarvesh yes yes right please go back to the previous question it is not about c of s by r of s if it is c of s by r of s then that would be equal to g of s by 1 plus g of s into h of s thank you very much for reminding that right so now look at that so because maybe this concept is related to the steady state error concept no problem even then we can solve e of s is equal to r of s minus c of s into h this part i think you all know this very well because r of s <laughs> minus c into h of s is going to be e of s guys you see many of you have done mistake right so e of s is equal to r of s minus c of s into h of s such as three please look into this and tell me what we can do better here now it's our responsibility to change c of s how do we write c of s here any idea from your side <coughs> yes yes what is your c of s by r of s so anyway this is a negative feedback system so therefore i could write down c of s by r of s is equal to g of s g by 1 plus g into h this is very 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 much known to you correct so now we can say wherever c is there there we can write down this as g into r right so g into r h of course divided by 1 plus g h right into of course r of s will be there now take r of s outside so it is very easy so e of s equal to r of s if you take outside right so 1 plus g h minus g h so this will be 1 divided by 1 plus g into h of course this is correct now come back to this side obviously you will be having e of s by r of s is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus g into h right so well option c is the correct answer right option c is the correct answer we have a lot of energy we are moving just like that so thanks for such a three every one of you appreciate such a three for recognizing this right option c is the correct answer guys tell me where do we really use this function right such shriyans correct satish correct every one of you have answered perfectly where do we use this one such a three such a three where do we use this one we will be using this function so regularly in study state error clear because when we want the study state error with respect to a specific input r of s then we require this transfer function so please keep that in the mind yes good study state error so Banerjee have answered it properly now let's get into the next question option c is the correct answer for 2021 question let's get into the second question we require y of s by x of s any answer from your side fast every one of you every one of you second question what would be your answer now what would be your answer so that is z1 by 1 plus g1 into h now think so karthik is giving like option c is the correct answer for this question right option c is the correct answer that is the given information no 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 i think <laughs> c is the answer for the previous question i guess for this question what is visible on the screen ec 2021 what would be the correct answer okay so let's go in the discussion mode so shriyams is saying option d is the correct answer anybody with uh, with shriyams here anybody with the shriyams shriyams is giving d now i will show it to you what majority people do and i will also show it to you what is the other way to do this one clear both i will going to say see one person is saying option a one person is saying option d and karthik is saying option c how many options we are getting for this question so first of all many students they will start doing like this g1 divided by 1 plus g1 into h and then 
they see that this block is cascaded with this block right this block is cascaded with this block then simply they will add right so this total network is added with this so they will write like this j2 right so they will write simply like this j2 and they will make it like so this is equal to c of s by r of s this is what most of the students they do i think even shriyams also done in the same way let's see all the possibilities right don't judge the question just by looking into that whether it is easy or difficult please listen carefully okay so then if you move ahead then c of s by r of s it will going to become how much right so, so obviously it will be equal to g1 plus g2 plus g1 g2 into h all the way divided by 1 plus g1 into h right how many of you got this answer i think mohan got this answer shriyans got this answer any other any other so satish is saying no it is c right it is c very good but now fight between you i want to the winner of the story okay so now satish who has got option c satish as well as kartik can you tell me what is the mistake here is it mistake or is it correct so tarun is also not agreeing <laughs> c right <laughs> no 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 shriyans we will do signal flow graph also don't be in hurry now you must tell me what's the problem where did you done the mistake here okay so taking everything to the signal flow graph is not a good idea i know that that is a brahmast but you must know the concept deeply right at the end anyway we will come back to the signal flow graph only but know everything accurately clear so first of all whether this is correct or not because some students are saying option a some students are saying option c if you have any confusion in the basics right so the best thing is go deeply into the basics well in the very first uh, attempt like how many students are doing here we got option a let's respect that okay and we will also see where does the mistake here clear or if it is not mistake we will find it no problem so first let us keep this as y right let us keep this as y we don't know what is this so let me call this as m we don't know what is this so let me call that as m right so let's apply the basics so this question is all about the basic only if it is m then i am very sure this is going to be m into h and if it is x i am very 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 confident that this x if you see it will going to become x minus m into h correct x minus m into h now move ahead so this m now how can i write this one g1 into x minus m into h here correct g1 into uh, x minus ms so they have not mentioned it properly right so this signal it will not come from this either they need to mention this or they need to mention this now you tell me what would be the appropriate point here that is the beauty of this question see all possible options i got it from the options never underestimate any previous year question right so they have uh, somebody is saying still is ashok is with a right so whether should i keep this here or should i keep this here so where should i keep because if you keep based on your location the answer will going to change right so that's why you must be very sharp usually this has to come from the input only right so this has to come from the input right so because when they mention at this point it means that uh, before this result before this result itself this is there clear so therefore i should say this is x means obviously this will be x into g2 here clear so now rethink about the question here now tarun you must again solve the question i know you have done the mistake so please see so x into g2 and then you will going to get x into g2 here correct x into g2 now what would be the y value here y is equal to look at that y is equal to m can i write like m plus uh, g2 into x here now you require the value of m so solve this clearly every one of you please solve this accurately right don't throw the stones on me you must write everything clearly and accurately so from this i can say very logically this function if you solve m versus this how much you will going to get g1 into x right divided by 1 plus g1 into h and then additional to that we will going to have g2 into x correct so right so if you do like this then what else you will going to get you will be getting here as g1 divided by 1 plus g1 into h and of course plus g2 here and that whole into x now whatever the answer you are getting you can be very very confident about that answer 
Correct or not? You will be very confident about that answer. What is the answer? Look at that. The right answer for this is going to be again option A. Clear? Option A. I know some of the students have confused in between this, right? So whenever even if I solve this question in the regular classes also, people do mistake. Here itself, see, almost many students came with the many things. No, Tarun, you have done mistake, okay? You have done mistake, you have to rectify. If you start taking this point after the summer, then you will going to get that answer. But this has to be before the summer, clear? Because once the result is completed, then only we are eligible to take the point after the summer please note down this point clear tarun i hope you are understood this point you got this point so option a is uh, answer for this question how many of you agree with this please mention in the comment section i think many students got this one right very very good very good very good shriyans no problem maybe it happens <laughs> tarun might have done some small uh, calculation mistake he is a very good student maybe a little bit mistake right 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 See, Kamal, it's a very simple question. What is there here to understand? See, I took this point as M. Simple. I took this point as M and this is M. This is M into H. Clear? So then, this is plus and this is minus. So what it will become here? X minus M into H. Correct? X minus M into H. Right? And this X is coming from this side. So X into G2, that is coming here. So finally, your output will be equal to M into M plus. That means whatever is coming here, M plus x into g2 m plus x into g2 already we have the m relation here because m can be found by using the closed loop transfer function here or else we can say m is equal to g1 into x minus mh clear m is equal to g1 into x minus mh so when you write this equation already you know y is equal to m into g2 into x so i took that value of m and substituted here then i got option a clear right 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 so <coughs> come on Kamal Singh, is it clear to you? Kamal Pratap Singh, is it clear? Karthik sir, by signal flow graph? No, 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 no. You have done mistake. I will prove it. Don't worry. So, anyway, you will come into the signal flow graph also. Right? Uh, let's go to the third question here. Question number three, which was asked in the EC 2019. Right? Guys, please go through that. <laughs> Only Karthik, you have committed the mistake, I guess. Please repeat that. Kamal, is it okay? Kamal, please respond in the comment section. Is it okay or not? Have you got the idea? So, let's go to the third question here. ECE 2019. I think we are discussing more of the concept here. So, the block diagram of a system is illustrated in the figure shown where X of S is the input and Y of S is the output. The transfer function H of S is equal to Y of S by X of S. Correct, Karthik. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's move on. It happens when you are doing the questions obviously the mistakes will come that is the reason why we are always encouraging you to do questions 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 again and again right so see for the same question yes 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 right kamal very good <laughs> right very good kamal excellent very good guys right so keep it up so if it is y of s now again continue this is also a very simple question right if it is y of s then i can say this is going to be y right now you must be very careful guys here so see what they have given the uh, you know it is actually coming this side even for this particular question even if you go for signal flow graph it takes time to solve signal flow graph also so please be wise right while you are selecting so take this as m first of all we don't know what is this so let us take m here so y could be written as m by s number one is this y is equal to m into one by s otherwise if you don't write this or if you are not liking this so can i write like this here so please see here all of you so now you must know the shortcuts also here it must be written as s into y correct or not guys fast guys fast yes or no so if it is s into y then i am very sure that if this value is s into y then s into y into 1 by s will going to become y simple s into y into 1 by x will going to become y so simple so if it is s into y then i am very sure it will going to become like s into y here so one second this is going to be s into y here easy correct so because that signal is coming and if it is y then it will also be y so now see x is coming all the way then what is the value here can you tell me the value at this particular point will be equal to <coughs> s minus s into y and minus y here right so this is the value that we are going to have here and that value should be multiplied with this net value here correct so that means this must be multiplied with s plus 1 by s here 
correct s plus 1 by s and then you will going to get s into y here clear because ultimately after the summation we have s into y right so see that's why i told you that instead of drawing the signal flow graph these kind of questions you can do in one single step one single equation. finish it fast now now we can say x into s and then x into s by s so x by s minus <laughs> s square into y here and then minus 1 uh, y here so s into y into 1 by s right and then again minus y times of s and then minus y divided by s that will be equal to sy so i can take minus sy or uh, this side and equate it to 0 guys please make it fast what would be the correct answer for this question waiting for your answer right so just to solve this take x and y to uh, terms outside so it will be like x into i can say s plus 1 divided by s and if you are interested take the y times to that side so you will be having s square plus 2 times of y here <laughs> 2 times of s and then again 1 by s will be there here right and then plus 1 is there still right all the way you will be having into y here so simple put everything here and if you find the y by x or y of s by s of s and i'm very sure because all the way we have solved everything here right so option b will going to come as the answer just take the ratio between y and x you will going to get the answer so tarun is it okay right tarun has given the answer very correctly kamal pratap singh i need the answer from you is it clear or not have you enjoyed this approach or not in a simple shot you got the answer for this right however i know many of you might be really waiting for signal flow graph let's go to the next question what about here all of you electrical 2020 this question is kamal pratap singh is it okay previous question right guys look at this question so what is the answer for this so 2020 which of the options is equivalent representation of the signal flow graph shown below clear right <laughs> wow very good very quick very fast right so excellent right so there is simple logic here many students what they do is they will find the equivalent of that and then they will club and find this right but let me tell you what we need to do here is can you see and tell me how many paths are there here so forward path so forward path we have only one forward path so let me say that is p1 what is the forward path gain here so forward path gain is 1 into a into d into 1 that's all maybe this might be r here r of s and this might be c of s here correct so therefore i could be saying that forward path gain is going to be a into d right yes yes kamal is also in line with me and aligned to this session so loop one where is the first loop here guys first so the first loop is going to be this one right so it starts from here d and then c and you are coming back to the same point right so therefore loop one would be considered as c into d and what about loop two right such as three where are you i am not seeing any reply from you no answer from you are you aligned to me are you solving the questions so l2 what is l2 here loop 2 how the loop 2 will be so <laughs> any one of you what is the loop 2 here so loop 2 is a into d into e right so a into d into e correct so therefore i can write a into d into e will be loop 2 right now if you write the transfer function directly from monson's gain formula what should i write here p1 into delta 1 right divided by obviously p1 into delta 1 divided by delta so delta 1 if you see it is equal to 1 very simple because there are no individual loops which are not touching the forward path 1 so therefore delta 1 is straight away it is equal to 1 therefore what is the final transfer function here so the final transfer function is ad divided by 1 one second 1 <laughs> minus right so the loop gains here that is nothing but cd and plus a into d into e right now look at the question clearly this is the transfer function you must get so he is asking that yes very good such as three he is not asking that only the equivalent of this he is asking the equivalent of the whole signal flow graph whole signal flow graph ka equivalent kya hai right so as many students are giving option c is the answer let us see and analyze whether that is correct or not option c is correct or not because it's very easy if you have practice you can easily guess this one right so in the first uh, if you take option c option c ka forward path kya hai either so forward path we can say that is only one forward path here also that is equal to 
1 into 1 into a into c. So, obviously, you will going to get ac divided by 1 minus cd. This is forward path 1, right? What about the loop 1? Right? So, single loop we are having, very fortunate enough to see. So, that is a into c into e divided by 1 minus c into d. Clear? This is the loop 1. Now, find out what is the transfer function again from the Monson gain formula here. Very good, very good Tarun, very good Kamal, very good Bharat. All of you are doing excellent. So, please be with me till the end. It is a highly beneficial class. P1 delta 1 divided by delta. So, let us get into the topic P1. AC, <laughs> of course, AC divided by 1 minus CD, right? So, this whole, this must be divided with loop 1. 1 minus the loop 1 ACE divided by 1 minus CD here, clear? So, now, try to reduce this one, then you will understand what is the correct answer. 1 minus loop gain AC divided by 1 minus CD. So, if you reduce this transfer function, I am very sure that you will going to get the same thing like what we got earlier. So, option C is the straight answer for this. Before I solve this, almost 10 to 12 students have already answered this. But guys, those students who are very quick, please bear me because my class should be understood by everyone, right? So, there are almost around 40 students, 30 to 40 students are there in the life. So, please consider everyone, right? Sometimes I may be moving a little bit slow. Sometimes I may be moving very fast. So, please consider this. Right? Let's get into the next question. Last question. This you must solve very fast. Electrical 2022, the signal flow graph of the system is the expression for y of s by x of s is dash. So now, again, first of all, how many forward paths are there here? Look at that, the forward path 1 gain, g1, g2, 2. So therefore, I can say 2 into g1, g2, number 1. What is the forward path 2? Right, so g1 and then g3 and 2. So therefore, it would be 2 into g1 into g3, that is fine. How many loops we are having? Just look at the loop, loop 1. So, that is, this is the loop, right? So, G2, obviously, minus 1 is there. So, minus G2 and loop 2 is also there. What is the loop 2? This is loop 2. So, see here, G3, G3, G3 and continue here. So, this is another loop. So, this is minus G3. What would be the correct answer? Part of part here, all of you. Wow, 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 wow. Excellent to see. Outstanding, guys. Outstanding, guys. Right? So, therefore, now I can say the answer for this question is very straightforward now. C of S by R of S because almost everyone have done this very fast. P1 into delta 1, <laughs> P1 into delta 1 plus P2 into delta 2, right, divided by delta here. Now, once again, if you calculate delta 1 is equal to 1, delta 2 is equal to 1 only. This is also 1, delta 1, 1 and delta 2, 1. Then substitute this one 2 into G1, G2. Right. So, therefore, I could be saying that 2 into G1, G2 here, <laughs> right, and then plus 2 into G1, G3, right, and then 1 minus loop gain 1 and loop gain 2. What is the answer, right? So, this is going to be 1 plus G2, G3, G2 plus G3. Now, I think I am very slow compared to many students here, right? You guys are really doing excellent job, right? Kamal came up with the answer A, option A. Wow, so Shreyans is the first person who solved this. Great. So, with this, we have done with the block diagram reduction. As you know, we started the innings. So, the first four to five hours, I may be a little bit slow, but once I got the momentum, I play like Dhoni. So, be with me, okay? Right? So, option A is the correct answer for this question, right? So, those students who want to appear for ebook or want to get the ebook and all the preparation strategies, please subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the next one. Of course, the test series which is available in Baiju's exam prep, it consists of both full length test as well as subject wise test. If you want to appear for test series, you might be searching so many of the platforms, but make sure the service is provided by the Baiju's exam prep because we have wonderful team here, right? So, let's get into the uh, second chapter of the discussion. So, we took a lot of time. So, Kamal Singh, and very nice, no drop, right? Not even a single student dropped the session. Excellent for your commitment. Take a bow. So, let's get into the next topic here, next chapter, time response analysis. So, a lot of credit to you because today is the first day I am saying not even a single student dropped. Great, great to see that. So, let's continue the same harmony, right? So, IN 2020. So, whenever I found a good question from instrumentation, let me take IN questions also. 
बिकॉज लेट्स रेस्पेक्ट आर द गुड क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम एनी ब्रांच राइट सो क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स द सिस्टम शोन इन द फिगर ए हैज द टाइम रेस्पॉन्स वाई ऑफ टी टू ए इनपुट आर ऑफ टी इज इक्वल टू टेन इन टू यू ऑफ टी एस शोन इन द फिगर बी यू ऑफ टी बींग द यून स्टेप इनपुट बोथ के कम अटाव आर पॉजिटिव द गेन के ऑफ द सिस्टम इज डैश द गेन के ऑफ द सिस्टम इज डैश थैंक यू वेरी मच कमल थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक्स फॉर यूर अप्रिसिएशन राइट नाउ ट्राई टू लुक एट द क्वेश्चन सो इवन वेन यू लुक एट दिस इफ आई एम ए स्टूडेंट वॉट आई डू इज आई विल अंडरस्टैंड दट दिस इज अ क्लोज लूप सिस्टम फाइव If it is a closed loop system, the only thing which I know is y of s by r of s. That is a closed loop transfer function. Y of s by r of s can be written as g of s divided by one plus g into h, right? So therefore, in a very simple, very very simple calculation, I can rewrite this because you don't really require a rocket science to understand. This is going to be g here, right? So this is g, and h of s is going to be equal to one. This is g of s. Therefore, if you put it here. That is, then it will become like k divided by one plus tau into s. That is, g of s divided by one plus g of s into h of s. K divided by one plus tau into s into one. Therefore, I would be saying that y of s divided by r of s all the way it will be equal to k divided by one plus k plus tau s. This is what I do. Even if I am a student, if I am there in the examination hall, first I will do what I know. right so then let me take to the required thing look at the graph here when you look at the graph what i am understanding is this is the response means the output with respect to time correct even 10th standard student can understand that output with respect to time as the time is moving on the output is changing like this but i can see after a lot of time also the output is 8 that means that is the steady state value It means by looking at the graph one can easily say that y of infinity equals to 8 here clear y of infinity equal to 8 now let's bring it here so therefore y of infinity how can i write y of infinity but before going to y of infinity i want to show you here so please see right <laughs> so y of s is equal to r of s into k divided by 1 plus k of course plus tau into s this is very easy but you must know that from the final value theorem this is from final value theorem i am writing right where is karthik ayer karthik ayer what's your answer karthik ayer has given the answer 4 and benerji is also given 4 some other students got like 0.25 0.5 guys once you solve the question verify your solution once again so that you will understand really where you are committing the mistakes okay so y of infinity could be written as limit s tends to 0 s into y of s this is called as the final value theorem right now this can be equated to this easily right so let's see limit s tends to 0 s into y of s is what y of s is all the story here so therefore i could say r of s is 1 by s r of s we can say this as 1 by s here and then it should be multiplied by k divided by 1 plus k plus tau s here clear so now relax relax and try to simplify this s s will get cancel now when i substitute s is equal to 0 then let me take one step ahead and remove this thing here clear so therefore what you will be having here so please see y of infinity from here to here i would be saying that after substituting s is equal to 0 then you will be simply having like k divided by 1 plus k and we know from the graph y of infinity is equal to 8 right sir r of s is 10 by s okay thank you so this is 10 by s such as 3 is a torch bearer for us right because r of t is not a unit step it is You know, like R of t is 10 into U of t, right? Thank you very much, such as three. As long as you are with me, you will correctly catch that, right? So 10 by s, excellent. So if it is 10 by s, then we will be having 10 here, 10 k by 1 plus k, and that y of infinity is equal to, of course, it is going to be 8. Clear? So right, correct. So maybe Mohan Panda and some other students might also done the same way. R of s they might took like 1 by s. That's why you got wrong answer. basically because r of t is given like 10 into u of t so r of s is equal to 10 by s such as 3 is it okay now so 10k now go ahead 10k is equal to 8 plus 8k very sure from here it's easy to see k is equal to 4 so please see the calculation all of you because we are doing very fast so you must be with me together we have to continue the journey together 
such as three is it okay option answer is four that was 2020 question so how many of you got four here i am seeing lot of answers but there are some students who have done the mistake please verify where you have committed the mistake okay now let's get into the next question here again i n question let's see a second order system has a closed loop pose wonderful it has a closed loop pose located at s is equal to minus 3 plus j4 the time t very good at which the maximum value of the step response occurs the maximum value of the step response occurs they have mentioned something here in seconds round off to two decimals clear right wow kamal pratap sir i am not practice questions so i am feeling i need to do revision good now you are understanding so you need to do revision see ultimately when you are doing a very lengthy preparation you must know what is your strength and your weakness whenever you feel that yes i want to do revision no problem first complete the revision and then go for anything clear so it's good that you have understood yourself that's great kamal i appreciate you from the bottom of the heart right so if you take uh, the closed loop transfer function of a second order system how it looks like c of s divided by r of s is equal to omega n square divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n into s of course plus omega n square right so now if you want the closed loop system poles so then equate this denominator to zero right if we equate this what you will going to get s square plus 2 zeta omega n into s plus omega n square if we equate it to zero i am very sure that there are two poles you will be getting pole number one is going to be minus zeta into omega n plus j into omega n into under root of 1 minus zeta square and the second pole will be minus zeta into omega n and minus j into omega n into under root of 1 minus zeta square hope all of you know this one right in case if anyone is facing any trouble with any concept please go through my recorded lectures which are available on byju's exam prep lot of students in the chat box they have already seen the recorded lectures and lot of appreciation came for the recorded lectures don't miss the lectures even nyquist plot bode plot polar plot this kind of difficult concepts also i have extensively and extremely i have explained that so make use the services of byju's exam prep now if you go ahead what are the two poles that we are having here so s1 we have like minus 3 right so minus 3 and look at that s1 and s2 what is given here minus 3 plus j into 4 and minus j into 4 now look at that just compare these two so when we compare this i am very sure to say that is going to be j omega n just compare these two finished j omega n is equal to 4 uh, sorry 3 and then omega n into under root of 1 minus omega uh, z square g square this is usually called as a damped frequency omega d correct this is considered as omega d now look at that if you compare omega d with the this value then omega d will be simply equal to 4 right so this is 4 easy very easy very simple right so now let's good uh, let's continue this one zeta into omega n is 3 when i compare this to and omega d is 4 everything is perfectly all right now hold on and see what is the question the time t at which the maximum value of the step response occurs what is that what is that yes yes mohan rightly pointed out excellent so they are asking what is the peak time clear because the maximum value of the step response occurs only at the peak time because that is the peak the time taken for the response to attain its peak or maximum is called as the peak time correct so tp yes 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 so tp now that's the beauty here Harinad, that is where uh, many students they will block uh, the answer. So please see. Tp, we know that pi by omega d, right? So pi by omega d, already hamara paas hai, 4, right? So let us take that value. So pi divided by 4, we don't require <coughs> zeta here. Why do why we don't require? Because we know that Tp is equal to pi by omega d, and omega d is already available here. That is pi. Is it clear now? Harinath, Harinath Razu, I know you, um, some of you might struck here, they might be using like omega d is equal to omega n into under root of 1 minus zeta square and again calculating omega and zeta not required all, right. So just you take omega d from here and substitute that, it is a very very simple question, it's a trap to many students, many students might have trapped in the 
finding the solution i guess right so what would be the correct answer here pi divided by 4 is the correct answer so if you are running behind calculation of omega n and zeta that's a big trap to you that's really a big trap you don't require to do calculation for omega n and zeta right yes yes kamal very good so answer is 0 0.785 now let's get into the next question here so see in seconds round off to two decimal values so either you can keep like 0 0.78 or you can keep like 0 0.79 that's also okay okay now let's get into the next question for effort this is the simplest question i guess 2018 i can't do anything about the simple questions because i need to discuss this they are previous year questions right so many students will now understand that gate is not so difficult question as far as at least half of the paper is considered i am very sure there are some good questions but all the questions are not difficult please remember this point right now match the following what would be the things you need to do this side we have transfer functions that side we have uh, you know nature of the system so let's get into the first one so p <laughs> let's see the first one here so if you have p 15 divided by s square plus 5s plus 15 guys fast so now if you see omega n square compare with the standard second order transfer function that is omega n square divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square so omega n square is 15 therefore i would be saying omega n is under root of 15 and then 2 zeta omega n is equal to 5 by this time you must complete this question right so i am doing slowly because of many students but every one of you must complete this what would be the answer for this very good right so root 15 because the things are all about the nature of the system we don't really require to calculate omega n we can take omega n and put it here 5 divided by 2 into root of 15 how much it will going to become so it will be equal to 0 0.645 so let me write down 0 0.645 so it's an under damper system correct so 0 0.645 means it's less than one <laughs> so i can say under damped right so under damped system what else we can say look, look at the uh, you know second option also so that is q if you look at q i'm very sure that omega n square is equal to 25 for the q second option omega n is equal to 5 and when i compare then 2 zeta omega n is equal to the denominator is 10 here right so therefore 10 here so zeta obviously it is equal to 10 divided by 2 times of omega n that is equal to 2 times of 5 it is equal to 1 means it is a crystal clear critically damped system clear critically damped system because the zeta is equal to 1 right so if p is equal to 3 that means p is 3 under damped q is critically damped then obviously r must be equal to over damped only because only one option is left so what would be the correct answer option c option c such a fundamental question this is right such a fundamental question that was asked in 2018 from electrical paper but don't assume that by looking at this question the overall gate paper is easy right so don't make yourself as a fool right okay so there are some questions which may be easy and if you are getting that easy questions should we appreciate the question paper setter or not if you are getting the easy question then everyone will answer that always try to expect moderate to difficult questions then only your preparation value will be resembled there clear correct correct harina correct now let's get into the next one so this is a good question i see so the damping ratio and undamped natural frequency of a closed loop system has to be found what are the values of zeta and omega n i think there is a small mistake here this is 10 by s so please try to know that this is the 10 by s there is a small mistake here i know because this question so 10 divided by s 10 divided by s and 10 divided by s right so what we need to do first of all reduce this function reduce this function this is the 10 divided by s it's not 10 into s i am repeating once again it's 10 divided by s small mistake so please see so then i would be saying its transfer function will be equal to what g of s that is 10 by s whole divided by 1 plus the feedback is 1 here the feedback is 1 so 10 by s into 1 so therefore it will be equal to 10 divided by s plus 10 right so simple calculation correct so then this 10 divided by s yes, plus 10 that is cascaded with 1 more 10 by s here 10 more uh, 10 by s so what should i say in fact now the whole function has to be rewritten like this guys fast i appreciate the people who completed this question by this time 
Use your pen and paper and calculator. Make it fast. 10 divided by S plus 10. And of course, this will be equal to 10 divided by S here. So, 10 divided by S. I told you that this is what you need to take. Y of S here. Right. And then take the feedback gain is equal to 1. So, this is going to be 1 here. Now, wow, wow, very good. Option A, many students have given. Let us see what would be the answer. Y of S by uh, R of S here. That is equal to, now this total will become G of S here. Clear, total will become G of S. So, therefore, I am writing directly here, 100 divided by, 100 divided by S into S plus 10. This is your G of S, whole divided by 1 plus G of S into H of S. That is 100 divided by S into S plus 10. Of course, H of S is 1. Now, Y of S by S of S or Y of S by R of S, if you write clearly, what you will going to get? How many of you got option A? Only two members. Really disappointing to me. It's a simple question. I expected many of you might do the answer properly. S square plus 10S plus 100. Correct. This is what you will going to get if you simplify that, right? So, if you simplify that, that's what you are going to get. Now, again, compare with the standard second order transfer function. So, the numerator must be equated to omega n square. So, omega n is equal to 10 then. Omega n square is 100. So, omega n is equal to 10 radian per second that is a simple thing and then 2 zeta omega n we can compare and equate it to the coefficient of s in the denominator that is 10 here very good very good tarun so zeta will be how much zeta is equal to 12, 10 divided by 2 times of 10 here so of course it is equal to 0 0.5 clear 0 0.5 so 10 and 0 0.5 where is the correct answer so option a is the correct answer simple question hai na a b simple question hai c 22 2022 is a really golden year as far as this question is considered not the whole paper for electrical guys okay so let's get into the next question here right next question this is a good question let me see how many of you will answer this one ec 2019 okay so consider a causal second order system with the transfer function g of s is equal to 1 divided by s square plus 2s plus 1 so, maybe this is a causal second order because we have 1 divided by 1 plus 2s square plus. Maybe this itself is the closed loop system. Clear? So, closed loop transfer function. Even they mention g of s, h of s doesn't matter for us. Right? <coughs> it has to be closed loop transfer function only. No option. One second. Closed loop transfer function CLTR. That is equal to 1 divided by s square plus 2s plus 1. Now compare with the standard form omega n square divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n into s plus omega n square. Read the statement of the question every one of you. So omega n is equal to 1 radian per second. This is easy to say. And then 2 zeta omega n is equal to 2 here. So therefore I would be saying that zeta is equal to 1. Wow, wonderful. This is critically damped, right? So it's a critically damped system. Right? So, it's a critically damped system. I would be saying that this is a very, very simple thing. Critically damped system. Right? So, if it is a critically damped system, so how do we attain other step response? Please see here. They told that it is a unit step response. Such as 3, correct? So, such as 3 aligned to me. Right? Everyone very good. So, R of S is 1 by S as an input. Let C of S be the corresponding output. Okay? So, that means they are expecting the step response. Right? Anand is asking some question. Sir, if omega n square in both numbers and then I didn't understood that what you are asking Anand. Can you elaborate it once? <laughs> Please elaborate it once. The time taken by the system output C of t to reach 94% of its steady state value. Right? So, steady state value he himself told that limit t tends to infinity round off to the decimal is dash. Clear? Anand, let me try to understand your question. Sir, if omega n square in both numerator and denominator are not equal. Wow. Okay. Got it. Got it your question. So, uh, excellent question that is in fact. Suppose Anand, please see. Please see. In control system, it must be same. But in measurement system, sometimes it may not be same. Suppose let us say you have like 3 divided by s square plus <laughs> s square plus 2s plus 5. Correct. So, if you have in this way, guys, can you tell me if you have this way, what is omega n? 
you have to look at the denominator only to calculate the omega n and zeta not the numerator i repeat you need to look at only the denominator to calculate the omega n and zeta not the numerator then you may ask a question to me what is this sir why i should not consider numerator simple so i can do a small modification here just see here so i can multiply here 5 and divide with 5 so this it will going to become 3 by 5 into 5 correct 3 by 5 into 5 then i can rewrite the same transfer function like this also so 3 divided by 5 into 5 all the way divided by s square plus 2s plus 5 then this will become the static gain which is called as a k clear then this will be omega n square and the same thing will continue anand i think i have answered your question you need not to worry you have to look at only the denominator please respond anand this is for you for you i have explained this please let me know so the denominator is very important while you are checking for omega n and zeta in case of numerator and denominator are not same clear so <laughs> anand anand teja please respond in the comment section is it correct is it okay to you right critically down now what is the steady state value first of all because we all know that this is a closed loop transfer function no one has given the answer i am really disappointed guys you have to be fast right c of s by r of s here so therefore i would be writing this simply as c of one second what happened to here c of s equal to r of s into 1 divided by s square plus 2s plus 1 here clear anand anand teja is it okay i have explained your question right i took some time to explain your question so i hope it's helpful to you right so c of infinity that is the final value first i require so this is called as the steady state value ssv let me write down steady state value ssv limit t tends to infinity so <laughs> sorry this c of infinity could be written as equal to how can i write this one so by applying the final value theorem limit s tends to 0 s into c of s right so s into c of s how do we write this one so limit s tends to 0 s into 1 divided by s square plus 2s plus 1 into r of s is there anyway 1 by s here so this this will get cancelled very sure that it will catch up one clear so c of infinity is very straightforward here guys that is equal to 1 that is equal to 1 but he is expecting that the output should reach 94 percent of the steady state value 94 percent of the steady state value that means he is expecting that the output must be equal to 94 percent means 0 0.94 into steady state value c of infinity that is equal to how much 0 0.94 only that is he wants c of t is equal to 0 0.94 and he is asking the question at what time it will happen at what time it will going to happen correct so there are two ways to solve this question if you already know because it is a critically damped system if it is a critically damped system if you apply the step input if you apply the step input to the critically damped system either you can apply the partial fraction and find the complete solution that is one way other way is we can directly use the relation which we have derived in the technical classes okay in recorded session in live section everywhere right so the step response please try to see step response i have proved all these things a number of times in the regular classes step response of critically damped system they are critically damped <laughs> i don't know what happened to anand anand i have answered your question but not received the acknowledgement from you step response of critically damped system could be given as equal to what so that is equal to c of t equals to 1 minus e power minus omega n into t into 1 plus omega n into t this is the basic equation guys you must understand step response of critically damped system and step response of under damped system you must keep in your mind don't buy heart it but rather solve number of questions then automatically it will be there with you otherwise you can simply take c of s by r of s here because we know it could be 1 by s into 1 divided by s square plus 2s plus 1 then go for partial fraction here so it will be like 1 divided by s into s plus 1 whole square which could be written as a divided by s plus b divided by s plus 1 
and C S plus D divided by S plus one whole square. So if you do the partial fraction and then take the inverse Laplace, then you will going to get the C of T expression. But it will take long time, right? It will take long time. It is up to you whether you will use that basic procedure or else if you use the formula. But anyway, what we require here is the C of infinity must be equal to 0.94. Let's get into that. 0.94 that must be equal to one minus e power omega n is how much? Look at that. Omega n is 1, fine. Omega n is 1 means e power minus t into 1 plus omega n is 1, so 1 plus t. So, I think it is very easy to say now. So, from this relation I can say e power minus t into 1 plus t that is equal to 1 minus 0 0.94 that is equal to 0 0.06. What is the value of t from here? You need to substitute the options and verify it. Substitute the option and verify it. Four options are there. What should be the condition now? Now you must say e power minus t into 1 plus t that must be equal to how much 0 0.06. Look at the options and tell me what is the correct option here. Such as Sri, Kamal, Pratap and Shriyams, Hemant Kumar all of you must say here. So Karthik and Banerjee this must be satisfied. What is the correct value of the time? So <laughs> yes B Karthik is coming with the B yes correct. Very good Karthik, excellent. Just substitute that value here. Substitute that value, you will understand what would be the correct answer here. So, at t is equal to 4.50, I can say that C of t is going to reach 0 0.94. Clear? Very good, Hemant Krishna. Very good, Tharun. Very good. So, 4.50 is the correct answer for this question and this is a good question. The only problem with this is, if you don't know how to do the partial fraction in the first phase, then you may struggle. If you already know this expression, then it is an added advantage to you. Clear? So you can save at least one or two minutes here. Right? So 4.50 is the correct answer. Now let's go to one of the good question here. Right? So two linear time invariant systems transfer function g1 of s is equal to this and g2 of s is also given here. So, have the unit step responses y1 of t and y2 of t respectively. Which of the following statements are true? y1 of t and y2 of t both have the same percentage of peak overshoot. Wonderful, right? So, I think for g1 of s, look at that. I think we need to catch first what is the zeta and omega n for both the functions, right? 10 divided by s square plus 2, oh, sorry, s square plus, s square plus, s plus 1. What about tell me what is omega n and zeta? Now, I think there is a mistake here. So, this could be 10. Okay. So, I know the question. That's why I am saying that it is 10. Okay. So, it is 10. Now, can you tell me omega n and zeta here? Omega n is going to be under root of 10 radian per second. That's perfectly all right. And 2 zeta omega n is equal to 1 here. So, therefore, zeta is equal to 1 divided by 2 times of omega n. So, this will be equal to 1 divided by 2 times of root 10. Any one of you, what is the zeta value here? Fast. Very happy to know a new formula. Right, 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 right. Very good. Thank you very much, Mohan. Thank you very much. Thanks for your response and thanks for your love and affection. Let's rock this session and make it this as a one of the best session in the YouTube. Okay. So, the zeta value is going to be equal to 1 divided by 2 root 10, I made it. So, it is 0 0.158. This is the zeta value. We are getting like this. Right? This is, M yeah, yes. Yes, Tarun. This is the MSQ. This is the MSQ. More than one option may be correct answer. So, we need to verify this. So, it will take some time. Have patience. Okay? 0 0.158. Hemant Krishna, 0 0.158. Now, omega n is how much? Root 10. So, guys, root 10. <laughs> don't neglect this. Root 10. This will be equal to how much? 3.162, 3.16 radian per second here, clear? So, radian per second, right? Now, let us get into the next function and see what will going to happen. G2 of S, G2 of S that is equal to 10 divided by S square plus S square plus S into root 10 plus 10. Iska omega n kitna hai? So, same omega n you will go indicate, I guess, right? So, under root of 10, that is equal to 3.16 radian per second. Omega n is straightforward for both of these two same. Now, guys, look at this question. This is a wonderful question. Don't neglect this one. Now, moving ahead, 
so <laughs> omega n is known to you then zeta is what zeta is equal to 1 divided by 2 zeta sorry 2 zeta omega n is equal to root 10 here so we have root 10 here so therefore i can say root 10 divided by 2 times of omega n here i'm very sure this will be equal to 0 0.5 correct this will be equal to 0 0.5 now look at the most fantastic question here option a option a is about percentage of peak overshoot correct option a is about percentage of peak overshoot any one of you which one will going to have uh, but whether i n of t or i 2 of t have the same percentage of peak overshoot is it correct guys it's not right because the percentage of peak overshoot formula peak overshoot let me write down pos it must be equal to e power minus zeta into pi divided by under root of 1 minus zeta square into 100 this is the percentage of peak overshoot correct so if it is the percentage of peak overshoot it is directly depending on depends on the damping ratio that is zeta it's directly depending upon the zeta right No, but actually I know the question. That's why I'm making this. Karthik, we'll see that. We'll see that <laughs> whether that is 1 or 10. So no problem. First, let us continue that. So if that is the case, let's go with this because the concept is important, right? So not equal. Very good. Very good, Mohan. Very good, Tharun. So option A, straight away it is going to be wrong. We cannot change the question, no. Uh, uh, I mean, Karthik, but I, I really appreciate your efforts towards the thinking in that way, right? Karthik, do one thing, what about uh, 2022 paper open Kardo and check this question. So, whether it is 1 or 10, we will see. Sometimes it will happen, DTP mistakes will be there, but we should not blame anyone. So, let us see the second option here. Y1 of t and Y2 of t have the same steady state values, right? Same steady state values. I think this will match now, right? So, same steady state values means C of infinity in the first case. C of infinity would be written as equal to limit S tends to 0, S into C of S correct so limit s tends to 0 s into c of s could be written as because this is going to be c of s by r of s in the first case and in the second case this is going to be c of s by r of s i think when we see in the first case so 1 by s into so <laughs> that is 10 divided by s square plus s plus 10 excellent right so this is what we are going to have right so now s s can be cancelled out here and if you substitute s is equal to 0 it will be 1 here simple that is and look at the second statement our second transfer function c of infinity this is c1 of infinity c2 of infinity limit s tends to 0 s into c2 of s here so maybe <laughs> this i would be taking c1 of s and this might be c2 of s now again look at back here limit s tends to 0 s into c2 of s how can i write c2 of s is equal to r of s into this total function correct r of s into this total function 1 by s into 10 divided by s square plus root 10 times of s plus 10 that is equal to 1 once again if you cancel and substitute everything you will going to get 1 what is the meaning of this option b is correct or not tarun excellent tarun very good nice that right? option b is the correct answer for this question okay option b is the correct answer for this question okay karthik excellent then fine right so no issue okay so now let's keep that yes 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 sir question in somewhat some like 10 is uh, yeah 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 correct 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 so now no need to be panic no need to be panic because <laughs> i thought that it has to be 10 so we went like that b is coming correct answer but our friends are saying that it is not like 10 in the question paper it is one only no issue we will change that what is there right so because all the things are ready right so <laughs> in that case if it is the case guys are saying that this is one only the dtp person have run correctly well no problem let us see what will going to happen is there any changes in the value yes the first one is going to be one here so well no issue it's good only omega n is equal to one then what is zeta value in that case zeta value will going to come here 0 0.5 right <laughs> this is going to be 0 0.5 excellent and then the rest of everything will be correct only right so first one is going to be 0 0.5 and the second one is also going to be 0 0.5 if now if you take this as a 10 here no issue let's continue to work out on this and find out what is correct answer because ultimately concept is important ultimately concept is important right 
So y1 of t and y2 of t have the same peak overshoot. Now the only one beautiful point here is now the zeta value is same. Zeta value is 0.5 here and here also zeta value is 0.5. So now it is the percentage of peak overshoot. Therefore, percentage of peak overshoot directly depends on zeta. So if you take one here, guys, please listen here properly. If you take one here according to the paper, because she such as Sri and Karthi have confirmed me that it is one only. Thank you. So if it is one, as the zeta value is same in both the cases, option A is the correct answer. Please respond in the comment section. Is it okay for every one of you? Right? Guys, <laughs> every one of you. Now A is correct. Correct Tarun. Very good. Right? Now B and I'll look at the B. This is very good. I liked it now. Right? So then we understood that by changing the denominator, if you take this different value, then the option is changing. Good. Crazy. So now what will going to change? Don't take 10 here. Take it as 1. Then I am very sure that here it will become like 10 and it will become 1 here. Clear? So second option is wrong answer. Clear? Second option is wrong answer. Hemant, very good Hemant, right. So I think Anand, earlier Anand have asked that question only. That is, if the denominator having one and numerator and denominator both are not same, oh my god, what to do? So that's why I told you that we need to depend only on the denominator because that is called characteristic equation. Clear? Right. So what about C guys? Option C. Let's see. Y1 of t and Y2 of t have the same damped frequency of oscillation. Omega d is same. That's what it was said. Right. We all know omega d is actually nothing but omega n into under root of 1 minus zeta square. In both the cases, omega n, <laughs> one second, omega n is 1 radian per second here, right? Here omega n is 1 radian per second and here it is 3.16 radian per second. So option C, yeah, 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 correct, correct, Harinath, very good, correct. See, it happens sometimes, what uh, I have written gate almost 11 times, so I came to this situation that in the question one might be there, but in the notepad, where you are working out, there you will write like 10. Okay, sometimes it may be 10 here and you will write like 1 and you will get a wrong answer. So these things, you know, by practice only you can avoid this. Option C, guys tell me option C, what is the situation? Both have same damped frequency, correct or not? No, because if you see omega d is equal to omega n into 1 minus zeta square, in both the cases zeta is same, 0.5 and 0.5, but omega n is different. So there is no scope to get this one. Option C is wrong answer. I think you guys have already done that, right? So let's get into the next one. Please let me know. Option D. Y1 of t, Y2 of t both have the settling time 2% only. So two, same 2% 2 settling time. Same 2% settling time. I think this question tested all the formulas, I think. 2% settling time means 98% it should reach. So 4 divided by zeta omega n, <laughs> right? So B, C, D is wrong. All three are wrong. So 4 by zeta omega n. Just now I told you clearly that zeta is same for both the cases. Zeta is same for both the cases but omega n is not same. If omega n is not same, zeta is same, then I cannot say in both the cases we will going to have the same settling time. Correct? So option D is also wrong answer. Good. That means it is a, it is not a multiple choice question. I thought that but it's a <laughs> multiple, uh, you know, uh, multiple, it's not a multiple Select question, it's a multiple choice question. It's MSQ only. Tarun, very good, Tarun. You are very fast. So, guys, is it okay up to here? All of you are still having the energy because long way to go. We have just solved only 11 questions, right? But another 30 questions are still remaining, 30 to 35 questions. Let's go with a huge amount of energy. I want a reply from every one of you in the comment section. Are you energetic with me? Guys, tell me. So, <laughs> fire, I need to see fire in you, right? So, well, next question. Only one fire came to me. Only Kamal is saying, right? Karthik, good, good. Hemant, every one of you, good, good, good. Let's continue the journey. Never drop. Let's fight it, right? Electrical 2021. Solve first. Consider a closed loop system. GP of S is equal to this. Is the plant transfer function, okay? And controller transfer function is one. Oh, sorry. It may be compensator. He was saying that this is a compensator, right? So they are using the compensator here, okay? For a unistep input, the output response has a damped oscillation. Good. 
the damped natural frequency is dash radian per second. So, first of all, calculate what is CLTF here, closed loop transfer function. That is equal to, because we have both, right? GC of S into GP of S divided by 1 plus GC of S into GP of S. Now, if you are clever enough, then we can make it very fast because GC of S is 1. That's one thing. GC of S is 1. No issue with that, right? Let's continue. GP of S could be uh, given as, now I'm writing directly, 14.4 divided by S into 1 plus 0.1 S. All the way, if you take the total LCM here, then you will going to get S into 1 plus 0.1 into S plus 14.4 here. So simple to understand. Therefore, I can rewrite this as 14.4 divided by S square plus 0.1 times of S plus 14.4. Just this is the CLTF and look at what is omega D and omega, sorry, you require to calculate omega D. First of all, what is omega N here? Omega N is under root of 14.4 radian per second. What about calculate zeta value? That is zeta is equal to, zeta is equal to 2 zeta omega n, I need to <laughs> compare that with the 0.1 here. So, if you compare with the 0 0.1, 0 0.1 divided by 2 times of omega n. So, therefore, I would be saying that 0 0.1 divided by 2 times of under root of 14.4. Tell me all of you what is the value of zeta? What is the value of zeta, guys? So, value of zeta is going to be 0 0.1 divided by 2 into under root of 14.4. Check this one. So, I am getting like 0 0.01. Very, very less this is. Very less value. Very good. Very good, Hamant. So, zeta and omega and both we got it. Now, what we require is just put it all the values. We require, oh sorry. We require <laughs> omega n final. Omega d. Omega d is equal to omega n into under root of 1 minus zeta square. Right. So, we have omega n value. We have zeta value. Put it that and tell me what is the correct answer here. Every one of you, sir, characteristic equation is wrong. Where it is the problem? So, s square plus 0.1 s plus 14.4. I don't think so. It's correct only. It's correct only. s square plus 0.1 s plus 14.4. It's correct only, guys. No problem. Ashok, 0 0.03 is wrong. Calculation is wrong. I thought that characteristic equation. Okay. So, what is the value then? 3.76. Is it the value of zeta? That much great value you are getting. So, what is zeta value then? Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Understood, understood, understood. Got it, got it, got it, guys. Got it, got it. Thank you very much, guys. Right? So, because I am seeing the chat box, I am responding to your comments, again coming back to your, <laughs> you know, board and again doing it. So, it is taking little bit. Uh, you know difficulty here 0 0.1 into s square plus s plus 14.4 oh my god so many things will go into change here guys right 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 thank you very much people so characteristic equation correct who have told this point such as three before that somebody told this point right such as three is there. again once again such as three such as three is very nice such as three so point one if you take outside then it will become 144 here. Then it will be like S square plus 0 0.1 you have taken outside. So 10 into S plus 144. Thank you very much, such as 3. Nice. So this is a closed loop transfer function 144 divided by S square plus 10 S plus 144. Right. So lot many things are different here if you do wrong way. So omega n square is equal to 144. Omega n is equal to 12 radian per second. 12 radian per second. What about the zeta value? 2 zeta omega n. Now you have to compare 2 zeta omega n, right? So compare for what? 2 zeta omega n is equal to 10. So from this, zeta value will be equal to how much? So that is 10 divided by 2 omega n. 10 divided by 24. 10 divided by 24. That is 5 divided by 12. So this will be equal to 0 0.416. Correct or not? Tell me 0 0.416. 416 is the correct answer. Zeta is clear and omega n is correct. Such as 3, everything is fine. Such as 3, correct. So, zeta and omega n. 
then put both of these two values here for calculation of omega d and tell me what is the final answer for omega d both of you every one of you put it and tell me Bharat Raj is giving the answer as 0 0.90 rest of all the students first guys what is the correct answer omega n is 12 into under root of 1 minus 1 minus zeta square so zeta square is 0.416 to the power of 2 So I'm getting 10.91. Good, 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 good. A lot of students have done it accurately. 10.90 is the correct answer. Let's quickly put it the answer and go move on. 10.91 is correct. Good, good, Tarun. Let's get into the 13th question. This is, I feel that this is somewhat graphical question. Let's see. I don't think so. It's a difficult question, but let's see. Because even first time I'm also doing it because I want to enjoy the challenge with you. Right? So that's why I'm seeing for, for many questions for the first time. So let's see it. 13. The unit step response y of t of a unity feedback system with the open loop transfer function g of s into h of s is equal to that. Okay. Is shown in the figure. The value of k is dash. Mm -hmm. So unit, resp unit step response of a unity feedback system means he is saying that closed loop system has that response. Okay. Right. So first of all, what is the closed loop system transfer function here, CLTF? That is equal to G of S divided by 1 plus G of S into H of S or G of S. Because H of S is 1, so I can write down like this. Therefore, CLTF, which is actually nothing but Y of S divided by R of S, that is equal to, how much that is? K divided by, I am directly writing, taking that and keeping here. So you will be having like S plus. 1 whole square into s plus 2 kamal pratap singh is it clear to all uh, every one of you kamal i am not seeing any message from you long back it is right so please guys see abid baskar you are the first person who recognized the mistake thank you very much abid baskar k divided by all the way this one now all of you please follow up and see what we can do here the very best thing for this question is look at the steady state value here so it started from here all the way it went and oscillated and then oscillated, oscillated, oscillated and finally come to the steady state value. 0.8 would be the steady state value here. 0.8 is the steady state value here. So what does it mean? It means that y of infinity must be equal to 0.8. So I think that would be the easiest one to do solve this question. Because if you go for the peak overshoot, time response or you know rise time or peak time or any other thing if you do, it will become complex, right? So better to go for y of infinity is equal to 0.8. So from the transfer function, if you apply the final value theorem, y of infinity could be written as limit s tends to 0 s into y of s. That is equal to limit s tends to 0 s into y of s. Let me put it here. k divided by s plus 1 whole square here into s plus 2, of course, plus k. Don't forget that. Plus k. Now substitute anyway r of uh, y of s plus r of s is also there here. So there is a one small inclusion here. So this must be s into r of s. r of s is a step input 1 by s. Yeah, because he told that unit step response, right? So s get cancelled. So what you will going to have? Now y of infinity, if you substitute, you will going to have like uh, k divided by substitute s is equal to 0. This, this will get cancelled 1 into 2. So, it might be 2 plus k, correct? 2 plus k, that is equal to 0.8. So, what is the correct value of k? Guys, different, different answers I am seeing. Somebody is saying 0.5, somebody is saying 1.6, somebody is saying 8. Don't do like that. So, please tell me what is the correct answer. So, k is equal to uh, 2 into 0 0.8, 1 0.6 plus 0.8k, correct? 0.8k. So, I think... From this equation, I can sense that k is equal to 0 0.2, 1.6 by 0 0.2, this is equal to 8. How many of you got 8? 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. Ashok, where it went wrong, Ashok? Ashok and Venki, <coughs> please look at your answers. Uh, 8 is the correct answer. Good question. No? Good question in the sense, it's not so great question, but we can respect it because you need to interpret something from the graph. That is always better thing and most important thing. Clear? So, because we have a damped oscillation here, right? Now, let's move on to the next question. Wow, this is IN 2021 question. So, let's see. 
the step response of a circuit is shown to have mm -hmm, an oscillatory behavior at the output with the oscillation dying down after some time the correct interference regarding the transfer function from input to output or dash of course you don't require a question here he is saying that this is the way how the response looks like step response is dying down like this so what we can say here step response is dying down like this means see step response <laughs> obviously it will oscillate around some final value and then it will die off like this so this is clearly if you see all the way there is a presence of because is it under damped or critically damped guys tell me is it under damped or critically damped first thing yes sir my uh, yeah 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 okay kamal no problem let's let's do it let's do it kamal don't lose the confidence <laughs> right so now look at the question and see it is oscillating it is oscillating and crazy part is the oscillations are dying down. So it means that it is an under damped system. It is an under damped system. If it is an under damped system, under damped system, where the second order poles looks like or where the second order poles will be, right? So can you tell me? So this might be sigma here and this might be minus sigma and this is j omega and this is minus j omega. For under damped system, the poles will be in complex plane that is s1 and s2 both will be in complex plane very good very good under damper system is poles will be on complex plane so one pole will be here and another pole will be here fine so that is <coughs> that means it is of at least second order so option a is correct so minimum minimum order should be two minimum order should be two kartik i are right very good kartik and veera nagaraj nagaraj correct you are also right Option A, 100% that is correct. Option A, 100% that is correct. Let's see what are the what is the status of the other state. So that it is the first order system. It's not possible. Correct. First order system, unless until you apply other than step input, you will going to get, uh, there might be a chance to say oscillatory response. But for first order system, if you apply step response, you will never get the oscillatory response. Rather, you will going to get an exponentially increasing term. Correct. So good such as three, complex force. That's what I'm saying. So, Second option B that it has at least one pole pair. Very good. He mentioned clearly at least. Correct. That means you must have at least one pole pair. Yes, of course. This is a complex conjugate pair. And if you are clever enough, you can see that. That poles also we know. Minus zeta omega n plus j into omega d. Already I told you this point. Second is going to be minus zeta omega n minus j into omega d. Correct. These are complex poles only. Right? So, at least one pair must be there. Then only the oscillation may come like this. Right? So, option B, 100% that is correct. Option B is correct. How many of you agree with option B? Option B is correct. So, the third one is, it does not have a real pole. Clear? It does not have a real pole. So, option C is the very jabardas either. So, just see that it does not have a real pole whether that is correct or not right that has a it does not have a real pole it don't require a real pole correct it don't really require the real pole am i right even if you don't have any real pole if you take a normal closed loop system closed loop transfer pole right one divided by s square plus s plus one just to see the under damped response of this yes <laughs> yes we are going to get a dying oscillation like this if your closed loop transfer function is this we will going to get a dying response like this now you need to see it does not have a real pole that everyone ashok sachasri virarazu karthik abid everyone of you must say not necessarily you don't require you don't really require even if you have that the oscillation may die off right suppose if you take first of all it won't be a second order system in that case if you have something like 1 by s plus 2 here, right? So that means apart from these two poles, in your transfer function, you have one more pole. Let's assume that you have one more pole somewhere here. Somewhere here, a real pole is there. Even if you have this pole, because of this complex conjugate, you will go into get oscillation. And because of 1 by s plus 3, suppose let us assume that we are having some pole here at minus 3. Then what will going to happen? It is minus 3, let me say. 
So when you rewrite this you know time response form, this minus 3 pole may create exponentially decreasing. Clear? So then obviously it will going to add a cover here, right? So if you have, then it will going to die fast. It will going to die fast. Even if you don't have this pole, still also you will going to get the same. Again, you will going to get the same. Whether it will be quick or not quick, that depends on this real pole. Clear? So now option C is the correct answer or not. So that it does not have a real pole. You may have, may not have. So it does not have real pole means, yes, without that also we can get it. So option C can also be taken into the consideration. Clear? Option C also can take. Correct only, no? Because it does not have real pole. He, he didn't mention that you must not have real pole. He told that the transfer function doesn't have the real pole. Okay, let us see that one. Yes, it doesn't have real pole means I need not to worry about this one. Yes, let us consider only this one. He assume that the real pole is not there. Real pole is not there. If the real pole is not there, if the real pole is not there, will you get the uh, you know dying oscillation or not? Such as three, tell me. Such as three, Anand, Ashok, and Nagrazu, Himant, Karthik, everyone of Bharat, please tell me. Bharat is giving same. Yeah. If you don't have real pole here, if you have only this transfer function, whether will you get a dying oscillation or not in the step response? You will get it, right? You will definitely get it. Because in the second order step response means obviously it looks like this only. Whether you have real pole or not doesn't matter for us, right? So therefore that it does not have real pole is also a correct answer. So what is the final answer for this question guys? How many of you are with me? How many of you are with me? So what is the correct answer? The correct answer for this question is yes B is correct answer and even C is also correct answer. B and C both are correct answer. Are you with me? Are you aligned to the class? Such as three, Hemant. That it does not have a real pole. Means he is saying that in the transfer function you don't have the real pole. Correct only that is. Does not have the real pole means. Right. So when we have this we are going to get the dying oscillation. Yes, 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 yes. B and C. Very good. Good question. No? So most of the students what they do is they will select option B and they will leave it. But it is a MSQ question. So I wantedly didn't mention MSQ such that you will try for all four options. B and C are correct answer. Let's get into the next question. EC 2020. So look at the question statement. Consider the following. Yes. Consider the following closed loop control system. Okay. G of S is given. And this uh, maybe it's a plant transfer function. Let us say. It's a plant transfer function. And this is a controller transfer function. Okay. Fine. Controller and plant both will be connected in the cascade form. Cascaded. So if the steady state error for a unit ramp input is 0.1 then the value of k is dash first of all try to identify what is g of s into h of s g of s into h of s which is called as a open loop transfer function of closed loop control system clcs could be written as g of s into h of s which is equal to 1 divided by s into uh, s plus 1 into k into s plus 1 k into s plus 1 divided by s plus 3 right so therefore g of s into h of s equal to how much here so it is k divided by s into s plus 3 guys am i right this is a simple calculation oh very good karthik outstanding very good what about that sir uh, sir option a is correct now where oh i think we forgot that i told you that this is correct but i didn't mark that such as three once again i told that this is correct but we haven't marked it or oh, this is also a possible way you may do the mistake in the exam i told that this is correct option a is correct but i didn't mark that right so option a and b and c all three are correct <laughs> guys see the funny thing see the funny thing i told that it is correct but i didn't mark that right a b c all three are correct here okay once again it's such a three right so such a three is the torch bearer for us right so great so a b c all three options are correct we have done correctly we have identified that option a is correct but we have not marked it okay let's get into the next question quickly g of s into h of s is equal to k divided by s into s plus 3 fine 
Now steady state error for unit ramp is 0.1. First of all, this is the type 1 system. It is a type 1 system. For type 1 system, if you apply ramp input, what is the steady state error? So let me write down steady state error directly here, which is actually nothing but E of infinity. For type 1 system, if you apply ramp input, for type 1 system, if you apply ramp input, what it will become? Steady state error. Slope of the ramp divided by A by KV. Velocity error coefficient. Hope you guys are able to recollect this. Many students have already given the answer. Anyway, this will be 1 divided by KV. Correct? So, velocity error coefficient. How do we get that? Velocity error coefficient is limit. S tends to 0. S into G of S into H of S. Put it first, all of you. Then we can say limit S tends to 0. S into G of S into H of S. That is K divided by S into S plus 3. So, therefore, we will be getting here as SS get cancelled, we will be having K by 3. So, that is KV. KV is equal to K by 3. So, now come back here, put <laughs> KV value here. Then it will become 1 divided by K divided by 3 here. So, this will be equal to 3 divided by K. And that must be equal to how much? So, guys, fast. So, PV Raju has given the answer. Very good. So, 3 by K, what is the value? Study state error. He is saying 0 0.1. Put it 0 0.1. From there, we can say k is equal to 3 divided by 0.1. Obviously, it will be equal to 30. Clear? So, Karthik is the first person who has done this very fast. Very nice, Karthik. And then, Harinath Raju have also done it so fast. Right? And then, Ashok also done correctly. Right? So, k is equal to 30. So, previous question, please make a correction. A and B and C, all are correct. Every one of us should appreciate such a three. She is really finding. She is actually accurately scrutinizing everything. That is the hab that must be the habit of a student. Okay. So it is like you and me, the energy is flowing. Sometimes you may be doing the, you know, faculty or a teacher means out of hundred, the number of mistakes what is committed by a faculty may be less. Everyone will do the calculation mistake, but that may be less as we have great experience. But you must be accurate enough and identify those things, okay? That uh, those students who are identifying that, I love them. So, let's get into the topic. So, <laughs> I think out of 16 questions, one question I have done calculation mistake. I, I am openly agreeing with you, right? But no conceptual mistakes anywhere. 2018, so 16th question, consider a unity feedback system with a forward transfer function. G of S is equal to this. The steady state error in the output of the system for a unit step input is dash. Well, uh, this is very straightforward, I guess. So, the type of a system is what? Type is equal to 0. It is a 0 type. So, type 0 system. So, for type 0 system, if you apply, you know, a unit step input, what is the steady state error? Steady state error is equal to, obviously, it is 1 divided by 1 plus kp, unit step input means. If it is not unit step input, we must include that uh, value of the step here. As it is unit step input, I am taking the value of A as simply like 1 here. 1 divided by 1 plus Kp, that is the steady state error, especially when you are saying or when we are dealing with the unit step input for a type 0 system. Anand, welcome back to the session. I have answered your question, but I really don't know whether you have gone through this answer or not. Right? So, Kp is equal to what? Kp is equal to limit S tends to 0, G of S into H of S. Well, so therefore, let me go fast. Limit S tends to 0, G of S into H of S is 1 divided by S plus 1 into S plus 2. Fata fat. So, it will be equal to, uh, sorry, it will be equal to 2. Right? So, it will be equal to 2. <coughs> 1 by 2, in fact. So, Kp is equal to 1 divided by 2. Let's bring Kp value and substitute here. So, what is the perfect answer here? The steady state error, finally I can say E of infinity, that is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus, kp kitna hai either? 1 by 2. So, 1 by 2. So, therefore I can say, this will be equal to 1 by, it is 1.5. So, 1 divided by 2, uh, 3 by 2. So, it is 2 by 3. 0.67 is the correct answer. How many of you got it? Very good, very good, excellent. Love you guys. Most of the students are giving correct answer and one of the great thing is this is the very first time uh, I have seen in YouTube the count is not at all decreasing. That's great to see. Either it is increasing but not decreasing. 
I am really overwhelmed about your response and respect as well as appreciations. Let's get into the next question. And this question, I love it and I like it. Let me explain this properly. Anyway, 0.67 is the correct answer. Look at this question. How patients to read the total question? First of all, 2022 ka question hai a AC wala ko. So, 17th question, the block diagram of a closed loop control system is shown in the figure. Okay, this is the figure. R of S, Y of S and D of S are the Laplace transform of the time domain signal R of T, uh, Y of T and D of T respectively. Fine. From here to here, nothing is there. Useless that is, right? So, let's get into that. Let the error signal be defined as E of T is equal to R of T minus C of T. Beautiful. He himself told that E of T, always you must take R of T minus C of T only. Whether we have disturbance, disturbance, anything, no problem. But you need to take that. Assuming the reference input R of T is equal to 0, for all time is equal to all time. So that means, if I say for all time T greater than R equal to 0, he is saying that R of T is equal to 0. Then how do we write E of T then? E of T will be straight away equal to minus C of T. Correct, minus C of T. Good. Then, what is the steady state error? Due to a unit step disturbance D of T, you, due to a unit step disturbance uh, E of T, right? So that means, first of all, when it is going to be your error signal, what is the steady state error? Steady state error could be written as E of infinity. E of T already we know that that is equal to minus C of T. Then E of infinity is equal to minus C of infinity, right? Then all of you stop writing. Every one of you answer to me. Every one of you must answer to me. Please stop writing and stop doing look at here here he told in the middle of the question that the applied input is zero that means applied input is zero when we apply the i mean when the applied input is zero how do you get the output when you don't apply any input how do we get the output here we are going to get the output because of the disturbance clear here we are going to get the output because of the disturbance that's why Whatever the output you are going to get because of the disturbance at steady state, that itself it is going to be the error. Clear? That itself it is going to be the error. Why? When you apply the disturbance, there is no input. When you apply only disturbance, ideally what should be the steady state value? I repeat the question. When we don't apply any input, we applied only disturbance. Ideally what should be the final value of the output? Final value of the output must be 0, correct? Because the control system should not react to the disturbance. Should not react to the disturbance. That means if you don't apply the regular input, if you apply only the disturbance, then output of the control system must be 0. Other than 0, whatever you get the value, that is considered as an error. Clear? So anyway, they have given a lot of things here. E of infinity is equal to minus C of infinity. But guys, uh, 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 how do we get that? So E of infinity still if you go ahead, minus C of infinity could be written as it's a final value theorem again. So limit S tends to 0, S into, now we need to find out D of S. Because the output is coming because of the disturbance. S into D of S into, of course we will be having some function here. Let us see what is that function here. Clear? So we need to calculate and capture that. So that means first of all put R of S is equal to 0. You will get some confidence and then move forward. So <laughs> R of S is equal to 0. And then let us take this as Y and this is going to be Y. And this is going to be Y. No need to apply any block diagram reduction and you know gambling things. Just be with me. Think logically. Y and this is Y. Then what is this value? 0 minus Y. It's a subtractor. Plus and minus. So 0 minus Y it will be minus Y here. And then this will be what? Minus 10 into Y. Right. Then this will be what here? So, this value will be equal to D minus 10Y. Correct. So, this is a summer. D is coming from here. Minus 10Y is coming from here. Both will be added. And then it should be multiplied with by this to get the Y value. So, therefore, Y could be easily written as equal to 1 divided by S into S plus 10 into D minus 10 times of Y. So, D minus 10 times of Y. Let's get into the topic still. 1 divided by, in fact, D divided by S into S plus 10 and then minus 10 times of Y divided by S into S plus 10. So, let's take Y to this side. So, Y all the way 1 plus 10 divided by S into S plus 10 
of course right side we will be having like d divided by s into s plus then don't lose the confidence still continue because we are almost reaching to the answer guys <laughs> fast so from here i can say y divided by d y divided by d relax see what we can do here right y divided by d so what you will be having here so 1 divided by 1 divided by s into s plus 10 that is s square plus 10 times of s plus 10 that's it clear this is what you will be having so please see and confirm me whether everything is correct such as Sri Hamant Hamant and Karthik please see all of you Bharat also y by d is equal to this from this we can say y of s is equal to d of s into 1 divided by s square plus 10 times of s plus 10 great now <laughs> can you tell me what is y of infinity here so y of infinity could be written as limit s tends to 0 s into d of s sorry in fact i should write down this as give me one second time this is going to be s into s into y of s here so therefore i can write down like y of infinity equals to limit s tends to 0 s into d of s into 1 divided by s square plus 10 times of s plus 10 now relax guys minus 0.1 wow wonderful lot of students have given the answer but let me verify that once again so this is a good question because disturbance we need to remove here so let me write down disturbance here d of s is going to be how much here 1 by s because he told that it is a step input s s get cancelled when you substitute 0 y of infinity is how much 1 by 10 so 1 by 10 is going to be 0 0.1 but don't keep your answer as 0 0.1 here so look at that what is your answer so of course this is your study state error we have calculated just now and e of infinity is equal to so they told that it is going to be y so let me take y here nothing problem y only and let me say everywhere y because maybe they are so interested in writing like y so <laughs> let me write down this as y here otherwise you will get confusion so this is y of t and this is y of uh, t and y of infinity so it is equal to minus y of infinity which is equal to minus 0 0.1 because y of infinity is 0 0.1 so minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 Karthik minus 0 0.1 is correct or not look at that Karthik minus 0 0.1 is correct or not Karthik is saying some other answer but rest of everything everyone is getting 0.1 including me also yes yes correct excellent now I am asking a question to every one of you every one of you all of you take this as a question tell me what is the percentage of study state error you are getting what is the percentage of error you are getting ideally what should be your actual value right fine this is the error you are getting ideally what should be the value ideally just tell me what is the ideal value of that ideally y of infinity because of disturbance because of disturbance what it must be how much it should be ideally it must be equal to zero correct ideally <laughs> oh, oh okay okay Karthik no problem ideally y of infinity because of disturbance must be equal to zero but we got the error as 0 0.1 so in fact the output is 0 0.1 that itself is the error output is 0.1 clear ideally the output must be 0 now can anyone say vh is saying 0 very good can anyone say how we can reduce the error still i want to i don't want to see the error as like you know minus 0.1 i want to reduce the error even less than that how do we reduce the error any guess any guess guys how do we reduce the error just do a calculation instead of 10 this is a proportional controller in fact it is called as a proportional controller we will go into study this no problem instead of 10 you take this as a hundred okay take that as a hundred and recalculate the same thing then look at what is the study state error you will get you really enjoy a lot clear you really enjoy a lot right take this as a hundred and do the calculation you will love it right so well i think shriyans is not there where are you shriyans i am not seeing the message from long time yeah 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 keep controller gain high right Hemant. correct so i am seeing any response from shriyansh what happened to shriyansh so well let's get into the chapter number three 
it's almost around one and a half hour we took to complete the first two chapters in fact they are very big and the questions are also more last five years if you see there are a lot of questions from the time response analysis and even from the compensators no problem let's get into this right so the third concept that is stability of control system the very first question is the electrical 2022 a unity gain negative feedback control system has a loop gain loop gain means l of s which is actually nothing but g of s into h of s what of it guys so this is 6 by s into s minus 5 the closed loop system is dash right closed loop system is dash i think this particular question could be a uh, control system right so any one of you <laughs> stability stability wise you can easily say because the closed loop transfer function we can get it for effort first which is equal to g of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s it's a unity feedback system so whether it is g of s or g of s into h of s both are same only so therefore i can say this is equal to 6 divided by s minus s into s minus 5 plus 6 correct this is your cltf cltf if you see yes <laughs> mohan is saying b and vibe of saraf is saying a so guys please look at carefully so whether this is stable or unstable it is a loop gain but you need to speak about the closed loop system be accurate don't look at this and feel that the pole is there on the right side the system is unstable don't do that please guys don't do the mistake <laughs> okay so we need to get the closed loop, <laughs> closed loop system so this is 6 divided by s square minus 5s plus 6 what about calculate what are the closed loop transfer function poles here so if you want the poles closed loop poles closed loop poles any one of you closed loop poles i would be saying that you must equate this s square minus 5 times of s plus 6 is equal to 0 so i could say s square sorry in fact i think this can be rearranged like this so please see s minus 2 into s minus 3 equal to 0 so both the poles s1 is equal to 2 and s2 is equal to 3 both the poles are there in the right hand side of the s plane correct so both the poles are there in the right hand side of the s plane so the system is going to be unstable but so there are possibility either this or this right now i want to hear from you uh, uh, in terms of causality of the system right so option a and c are wrong <coughs> option a and c are wrong causality so whether it is a causal system or not waiting for your reply now i want to see how well you are very good in the signals and systems signals and systems whether it is causal or not no answer from you good hemant very good why by we is uh, saying that it's causal hemant is saying that it is non causal what about other guys bharat ras and such as sri please let me know whether it is causal or non causal okay then do one thing because it's related to signals na so do take that as a homework in case if you are not getting please respond to me anyway you all might be there in my yeah 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 option d good good a bit correct you are right okay it's non causal and unstable but look at the way why it is non causal you need to take back and construct a time domain function and from there you can say it clear so get <laughs> time domain equation from there and look at whether this is causal or non causal try to take that as a homework it's really very interesting thing okay because mm, tell me a bit tell me why it is because right i'm saying that constructed time domain form so because it is c of s by r of s right c of s by r of s so from here catch the response c of t okay how do we get c of t so i think this is done no answer from you such as three in this question how do we find the causality of the system causality means the output should depend only on the present and past inputs but not on the future right <laughs> all poles <laughs> all poles are right side good good but then it's very interesting argument so i suggest that take this single question as a homework you will really explore many things that is what i want that's why this is not correct reason <laughs> correct right very good vibe very good abid uh, you cannot say that is causal or not causal because the poles are there on the right hand side 
whether uh, you can only comment on the stability based on the location of the polls okay please remember this point that is most of the students they get doubt about this that's why i'm right uh, i'm saying you try to identify how we need to do this causal i love the students who explore by yourself in case otherwise i will give some time just think about that so question number 18 i want you to think that's why now let's get into the next question because if i started to explain the signals and systems then i'm very sure we will be in question number 18 for another 15 to 20 minutes <laughs> so let's get into the next question first which of the following option is correct for the system below electrical 2020 right so four options are there make it first y of s divided by r of s closed loop transfer function so how do we say this one so it is going to be h of s then and this total will be g of s here correct total will be g of s so therefore if total is g of s of course we can write down this is g of s so therefore 1 divided by s square into s plus 1 whole divided by see i have given this solution see guys those who want instantaneous solution i have given this solution in the byju's exam prep website just you type this question in the google you will going to get the answer okay typed solution is there easily you will be getting the answer no problem those who want to know about that i have already given the written solution and that will be there in the Baiju's exam prep, you know, website. Just put this question in the Google, you will get the answer, right? So, moving ahead. <laughs> so, G of S is this, 1 plus G of S into H of S. So, this is going to be 1 by S square into S plus 1 into H of S is how much? 20 divided by S plus 20, correct? 20 divided by S plus 20. Let's move forward. That is the closed loop transfer function, Y of S by R of S. All the way we can say, this is S plus 20 no doubt about that whole divided by s square into s plus 1 into s plus 20 and plus 20 wow my god right so i think you need to work out this for the routh harvich criteria i guess right so it's not a, a easy thing so now the characteristic equation after making these efforts it is going to be s square into <laughs> oh so s square plus 21 times of s plus 20 all the way plus 20 correct so move ahead so characteristic equation will be equal to how much so s power 4 plus 21 times of s cube plus 20 into s square plus 0 into s plus 20 this is the characteristic equation fourth order unstable because of the repeated poles on the origin who told you that the repeated poles are there on the origin for the closed loop system why bow wrong answer you may be correct answer but why bow for the closed loop system no one knows that whether the roots are there at the origin repeated roots are there at the origin or not right so we cannot take directly like that so first you need to catch the characteristic equation you are looking at the open loop system and giving me the answer no open loop system has a repeated poles at the origin not the closed loop system because we have not solved this if you have already solved then fine right 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 correct nagras correct that's why sometimes in the known concepts we should not be over confident okay s power 4 and s power 3 and s power 2 and s power 1 and s power 0 is it correct why bow have you got my point why bow only should respond have you got my point or not why bow so now characteristic equation deploy the characteristic equation s power 4 coefficient 1 and then next 20 here so let me write down 20 here and then again 20 here so fine that is clear and then 21 sq fine and then 0 here and then 0 here yes yes okay let's continue the routh arvich criteria because the characteristic equation we have deployed it but what make it now already some students have given the answer and waiting for the answer for the from the other students those who have given the answer please verify the answers once 21 into 20 minus 0 by 21 so this will be straight away 20 and 21 into 20 minus 0 divided by 21 so it is 20 and 0 and then s power 1 coefficient 20 into 0 that is 0 minus 21 into 20 divided by 20 so what you will going to get here so you will going to get minus 21 guys look at this right look at this minus 21 
and then here it will be 0 naturally it will be 0 and then minus 21 into 20 0 minus 21 will going to get cancelled we will be having 20 uh, <laughs> yes 20 here is it correct so minus 21 into 20 minus 0 divided by minus 21 means you will be having 20 so how many of you have got correct answer here Karthik Iyer is saying C Ashok is also saying C well because in the first column you are able to see two sign changes here because this is positive 1 is the positive number 21 is a positive number 20 is also a positive number but 21 is a negative number and again we got a positive number so there are two sign changes here there are two sign changes that means two poles are there two roots of characteristic equation of characteristic equation are in the right hand side of the s plane rhs right hand side of s plane so the closed loop system is unstable what would be the correct answer for this one it's a fourth order unstable option c is the correct answer right sir can i start my gate preparation from first year obviously you can start there is no limitation but in the first year i request you don't go for any technical subjects please go only for the mathematics and aptitude okay if you start reading the technical subjects from the first year or you can it will add the value to you in the second year but it is always better to start from the mathematics clear so fourth <laughs> order and unstable well let's get into the next question fata fat guys i want every one of you to be on the toes the characteristic equation of a linear time invariant system is given by this so this is the characteristic equation right so the system is bibo stable if that means he want bounded input bounded output stable well again routh harvis criteria because the stability always the best option is routh harvis criteria if anyone com complete the solution give me the answer i appreciate the person who do accurately as well as you know fast both so go ahead so s power 4 coefficient is 1 and leave 3 and then s 3 and k so please see here guys 1 3 k and then again here 3 and then 1 and i am very sure the last one is going to be 0 correct so then if you look at the third row of this right excellent classes thank you very much ashok thanks for your appreciation 3 into 3 9 minus 1 that is 8 8 by 3 right and the next one is what 3 into k minus 0 divided by 3 so it will be k of course we will be having 0 once again very nice outstanding harinad excellent answer c oh i think lot of students have given the option c that is for the previous question i guess but for this question what is the correct answer 8 by 3 all these things s power 1 coefficient 8 by 3 into 1 minus 3 into k divided by 8 by 3 so therefore i have to write i guess 8 by 3 minus 3 by k 3 into k divided by 8 by 3 right and then rest of the things will be obviously 0 here and 0 here last one will be coefficient of s power 0 obviously it will be equal to k so no doubt about that one right so coefficient of s power 0 is 0 so what is the correct answer now so this is the positive number first of all let me take up here this is a positive number first of all and this is also a positive number and this is also a positive number we expect this also must be positive number right so that means 8 by 3 minus 3k that must be a positive number then only there will not be any sign changes in the first column of the router excellent lot of students have given the correct answer here so 8 by 9 that must be greater than k just do this then you will going to get it so k should be greater than 0 and less than 8 by 9 so what is the range now k should be more than 0 and less than 8 by 9 so the correct answer for this question is option c clear so we have reached half of the questions i guess option c is the correct answer let's quickly get into the next question what about all of you please do it every one of you ec 2022 right i think a similar kind of question this is but anyway i need to solve <laughs> let me take the characteristic equation here which is nothing but p of s and that is equal to s power 4 and 5 times of s square Five times of s square plus 0 into s please guys you must be very accurate here 0 into s the coefficient of s power 1 should be 0 here please use your mind don't be hurry hurry and do the mistake 0 into s and into 4 plus k. so 4 plus k will be there 0 into s should be there coefficient of s must be 0 here so moving ahead s power 4 let me write down and then 
Okay, I think s power 3 coefficient is also 0. s power 3 coefficient is also 0. So, please see here the same characteristic equation. One second. 0 into s. So, <laughs> yes, s cube here. And here, uh, s power 4. This is your characteristic equation. Please look at this carefully. 0 into s cube. Yes, yes, y bow. That's what I am saying. I have seen that. Very good y bow. So, it is going to be s power 4. It starts with this s power 3. I think it would be a good question. Let us see. s power 1 and s power 0. So, then again, come back to the nominal things. So, what it will be here? 1 and then 5 here and then 4 plus k. Good. And then 0 here. 0 here. Wow. 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 All 0 row we got it. Correct. So, what they are asking? The complete range of k for which p of s has all of its roots should not be there in the right hand side of the s plane. Wow. Should not be there in the right hand side of the s plane. That means, he is saying that do not have any roots on the right side of the s plane. That means, do not get any sign change in the first column of the row theory. That is the meaning of that. But anyway, when we have, oh, so this is 0, when we have all 0 row like this, how do we proceed? Whenever we have all 0 row like that, we must construct the auxiliary equation. What is the auxiliary equation? Let me take auxiliary equation cut off at here. Auxiliary equation means 1 row above than this. That is this. So, s power 4 I must say plus 5 times of s square here right? and then 4 plus k. This is the auxiliary equation. Right? So, then if you want s cube term, then d auxiliary equation divided by ds. How much you will going to get? 4 times of s cube plus 10 times of s, right? So, that is what exactly you will going to get when you differentiate your auxiliary equation, correct? Very good, very good, Tarun, right? So, now, therefore, if you have the auxiliary equation, then we can replace the all zero row here. So, I am rechanging <coughs> or I am changing the all zero row here. So, it will be like 4, first of all, and then we will be having 10 here and 0, finished. The game of all zero row and auxiliary equation is completed. Now, we are very happy to say here, yes, we have something. Let us find the next row here. Next row will be what? 4 into 5, 20 minus 10 divided by this one. 4 into 5, 20 minus 10. How much that will be? So, 20 minus 10, that is 10 divided by 4. 10 divided by 4, 2.5. Clear? This is going to be 2.5. 4s cube plus 10s. What is that, Karthik? <laughs> oh, you are saying about auxiliary equation. Fine. Right, so 2.5s and here 4 into 4 plus k, 4 into 4 plus k, 0 divided by 4. It is also very easy, easy term that is 4 plus k once again, 4 plus k. Now, go ahead, still continue, do not leave anywhere. So, 2.5 into 10, that is going to be 25 minus 4 times of 4 plus k divided by 25 here. Right? This is 0 here, so obviously 0. The next element, next element will be 0. Last element, undoubtedly, we will be having 4 plus k. No doubt about this one. Any answer from anyone? Vaibhav and Bharat are all are giving option A is the correct answer. But let me check it. Because we want no root should be there in the right hand side of the S plane. That means the system must be stable. Divided by 2.5. So, divided by 2.5. Thank you. So, all the values should be positive here. So, that means this must also be positive. So, this number should be positive. So, what, should is, uh, what does it mean? 25 minus 4 into 4, 16 minus 4k, I should say 24 minus 16 minus 4k, that must be greater than 0. So, therefore, I would be saying that 24 divided by uh, 9. So, 25 <laughs> minus 16. So, 25 minus 16, that is going to be how much? So, that is 9. 9 should be greater than 4k. So, therefore, 9 by 4 should be greater than k. This means that k should be less than 9 by 4. Which option will going to satisfy that? So, k should be less than 9 by 4. Option A is the correct answer. Who has given this answer? Bharat Raj has given the answer very fast. Very fast. Right? So, Bharat Raj has given the answer so quickly for this question. Very good, Bharat. So, let us go to the next question. Electrical 2022. 
So this question is easy, I guess. Let's see the open loop transfer function of a unity gain negative feedback system is given by this. The range of k for which the closed loop system is stable is. I want the answer should be very, very fast. Greater than or equal. <laughs> okay, okay, fine, fine. Right. Because it could be on imaginary axis or it should be less than that, right? So therefore, we could have 9 by 4 also, no problem. Because our ultimate aim is it should not be there in the right hand side. It should not be there on the right hand side. So therefore, it's clearly perfect. So, right. So now let's get into the next question 22. Fast, every one of you. I have 100% confidence on you. All of you can do this one easily. The range of k for which the closed loop system is stable. I am really getting bored to solve the same question and again and again. So, but anyway, I need to do as I need to cover all the previous year questions. So, let us get into this. So, 1 plus g of s into h of s. This is going to be, if you write fast, then I am very sure you will going to get s square plus 4s minus 5 and then plus k. That must be equal to 0. So, therefore, I can say simple, <laughs> very easy. So, you can put the values and check if you want. Right. So, very easy this one is that let me go with s square plus 4 times of s plus k minus 5 that is equal to 0. Check the values which would be the correct answer option c is very easy just option c everybody is saying option c k should be greater than 5. This is a such a damn dumb question this is right very dumb question. If you want you can even you can construct the route array also if you do not believe the calculator. So, 1 here and then k minus 5 and then 4 here and then 0. So, 4 into uh, k minus 5 divided by 4 you will going to get k minus 5. So, we require greater than all uh, elements in the first column must be positive. So, therefore, k minus 5 should be greater than 0, k should be greater than 5. In my opinion, this question does not even require you know uh, so much of time. But the only thing you must have confidence to read the question and answer it. Correct or not? Such a simple question, right? So, option C is the easiest uh, you know correct answer. Yes, yes, yes. Let us quickly get into the next question. I think this takes some time guys. This question takes some time because 7th order polynomial. No? So, electrical 2018. Now, get the energy. Every one of you fight with this. Short this question all of you. So, the characteristic equation is very big. So, <laughs> let me write down very patiently here. So, s power 7 because it is the previous year question. Let us respect because we do not know there might be a chance to have all 0 row or else complex force. So, please let us see clearly. So, s power 4, s power 7 and s power 6 here and s power 5 let me say and s power 4 and s power 3 of course s power 2 and s power 1 and s power 0. Last one is s power 0. Now, please help me here all of you because without your help we cannot move forward here. s power 4, 7 coefficient 1 and then like 7 and then like 13 here sorry not 13 31 right 7 and 31 31 here 7 and 31 and then 25 that is all so 25 so big question very big question but 2018 ka question so we need to respect the gate question let us go ahead 1 here and then 14 uh, truly speaking out of all these 23 questions I think only one question that is looking very challenging, right? The rest of all questions are very, very uh, conventional questions. Every year, same concept, same concept. Numbers are only changing. That's why people do say that, please go through the previous year questions. So, 14 and then you are going to have 73 here and then you are going to have 200. Clear? 200. So, now I think I require your help desperately here. So, 1 into 7. 7 minus 14. So, minus 7 by 7. So, it is minus 7 number 1. So, 1 into 31 minus 73. So, let me do calculation also here. So, one second. 1 into 31. 31 minus 73. So, 31 minus 73. It is a big number divided by 1. So, minus 42. Right. And then <laughs> 25 minus 200. 25 minus 200. So, it is minus 175. Of course, if you go further, it will be 0. Right, 0, 0, it will be 0. Correct. All of you, please check that uh, this row, S power 5 row. Look at this row and confirm me whether that is correct or not. Otherwise, we will end up with the wrong answer if you continue with the wrong things. Please confirm me whether the, uh, I mean like, S power 5 row is correct or not. Guys, 
at least any one minus 7 into 14 minus 7 into 14 is 98 plus 42 here divided by minus 7 so it is going to be 8 here correct it is going to be yes 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 thank you very much such as 3 let's get into the next row first here so minus 7 into 73 minus 7 into 73 plus 175 divided by minus 7 here 48 once again right 48 let's continue the next one minus 7 into 200 that is some value minus 0 divided by this so i think it is 200 this is so look at the next one yes very good kamal very good very good very good kamal i really appreciate you that you are fighting yes that spirit i love it right 8 into minus 42 8 into minus 42 minus 336 and then plus 48 into 7 oh this is zero very nice this is zero option c wow wow one answer i got it option right 8 into this one <laughs> 8 into 175 so once again 8 into minus 175 there is some big value and then again plus 1400 wow zero right so and then zero zero wow we are having all zero row also that's a twist right that is a twist here there is a all zero row also great then auxiliary equation we need to form this is all zero row get the auxiliary equation first i think vibo have done it already so let us uh, go with that some people are saying option a some people are saying option c anand teja so <laughs> verify your solution once again so auxiliary equation let me tell you auxiliary equation here 8 into s power 4 8 into s power 4 plus 48 48 into s square right plus 48 into s square plus 200 here this is the auxiliary equation 8 into s power 4 plus 48 into s square plus 200 great so if you take d acceleration uh, auxiliary equation divided by ds how much it will going to become now so auxiliary equation if you take it down then it will be equal to uh, 4 into 8 32s just give me some time here so it will be 32 times of s q plus 96 times of s that's it so 32 and 96 right 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 so 32 and 96 all zero row is coming that i agree and then if you solve this then you will going to get so 8 into s4 yes 32 and 96 perfect perfect guys why bow look at the calculation Th yes 32 96 very good mohan excellent next row that's why it was a like a good question i think i thought that why it is good question but like it's a good question only it's a lengthy question more than good i should say it's a lengthy question lengthy questions irritates you but we need to go with that no other option because it's a gate previous year question right 768 divided by 32 so 24 here directly and then 32 into 200 divided by this and 32 so it will be 200 zero zero great next 24 into 96 24 into 96 minus 32 into 20 32 into 200 wow big number right minus 4096 divided by 24 so it is minus 170.6 right and then so it is going to be 0 0 0 and then it's finally 200 clear so outstanding this is really outstanding here right this is really a very good question minus 170 and all this this yes 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 right but can i conclude anything here i should not conclude anything am i right so first of all what is the question he is asking uh, in the open loop left half of the complex plane how many poles are there in the left half of this plane listen first of all how many sign changes are there no sign change here one sign change let me tell you this is one sign change plus to minus one sign change and again here minus two plus that is the second sign change second two and then continue 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 two sign changes are there and again here third sign change is there 
and then fourth sign changes there four sign changes are there correct four sign changes are there right four sign changes are there means four poles are there in the right half of s plane four poles are there in the right half of s plane so let me say right hand side of the s plane right hand side of s plane how many are there four are there but what he is asking look at that in the open loop left half of the s plane are how many right so can i say out of seven four are there in the right hand side can i say that the remaining three are there on the left hand side can i say that or not tell me vh is saying four and other students are saying four four see right hand side we are having four poles left hand side how much it is because the question is left hand side of the s plane such as three is equal to how much one thing it is sure that number of poles are all put together seven number of poles are seven correct number of poles are seven right rhs four poles rhs four poles that we can say but what he is asking in the open loop left half of s plane here how many are there he is asking about this one we cannot say that total is seven seven minus four is equal to three we cannot say that in the left half once again in the left half so how do we find that kamal singh question is about number of poles in the left half of complex plane is how much how do we find that so right now we have four poles are there in the right hand side of the s plane but for that you need to understand out of these four poles of auxiliary equation Sir, how total number of poles are 7? Simple, na? See, the characteristic equation order is how much? 7, right? Chandrasekhar, how are you? After a long time, I am seeing. So far, you are so silent to hear. So, it is S power 7. Means 7 poles are there. Okay, order is 7, so 7 poles are there. Now, the question is, out of this, how do we identify the left-hand side poles? Any idea for any one of you? If you want to know, first of all, you must see that <laughs> out of seven poles four are there in the right hand side remaining three where they are whether they are in the right left hand side or maybe there is a chance that they might be there on the imaginary axis also correct so that yeah that you can understand only if you solve this auxiliary equation clear so let's see if you solve the auxiliary equation auxiliary equation let's consider auxiliary equation once don't conclude anything option b is wrong answer those who are giving option b that is definitely wrong answer two poles on imaginary axis very good such as three right so characteristic equation let us see first of all 8 x to power 4 at plus 8 s power 4 plus 48 into s square 48 into s square plus 200 so let us take this auxiliary equation and equate it to zero then we will understand whether do you have a symmetrical poles or poles on the j omega axis where does all these things right so 8 s power 4 plus 48 s square plus 200 so therefore if we equate it to 0 what should i say here so s power 4 uh, yeah so maybe it is going to be 4 times of s power 4 plus 24 times of uh, s square plus 100 times right so i think we can uh, make it still simple right so <laughs> therefore let me cancel with 8 itself. S power 4 plus 6 square plus 200 divided by 8. Will it get cancelled? 200 divided by 8. 25, yes. 25, that is equal to 0. Can anybody say what are the roots of this one? Do one thing, take S square is equal to P and substitute here. Then it will going to become like P square plus 6 times of P plus 25. Please tell me what are the P values here? So somebody is saying something why about remaining three must be there on the left hand side because in option there is no okay okay right 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 correct mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm, no pole on imaginary axis sir then we have only a uh, three right <laughs> yeah because there are only two options left hand side you must have three or else one because we understood that right hand side we must have 4. So, uh, that is a good idea, good logic. Remaining poles are how much even if you solve this or not. 
remaining poles or how many poles are there remaining poles are how many are there eliminate options yes yes vh that that is what i am doing remaining poles are three right so in case in case let us look at this one the remaining four poles like a right hand side you may be having some four poles here four poles are there that's okay so the remaining three poles now the doubt is how many there are there on the j omega axis that is the doubt so but we know that if some poles are to be there on the j omega axis if some poles are there on to be on the j omega axis they must be symmetrical right at the same time they must be complex conjugate already four poles are there in remaining three one pole cannot be on j omega axis right a single pole cannot be on j omega axis so you might have one pole here and one pole here if it is so there will be only one pole that lies here then only i can say one two three all the way this three plus four seven right and this is one possibility what is the other possibility here other possibility if you see right so four poles might be here so let us say that uh, four poles might be here so four poles here right hand side and remaining three there might be a complex conjugate like this or else anything is possible right this is one possibility and what is the remaining possibility one more possibility is one more possibility you see the third possibility is so there are four poles here let us say four poles the third possibility is here one here one and here one correct the third possibility is right but there is the possibility that you may have the pole at origin but if you have pole at origin you will not have a constant term so please see if you have a pole at origin you will not have 200 here you might be having 200 into s is it good or not is it good or not so if you have pole at origin you might be having 200 into s that means there is no possibility of having the pole at origin either this could be the correct answer or this could be the correct answer correct so in both the cases we have three poles on the left hand side because if you go with this then what would be the answer if you go with this particular uh, you know uh, what do you say like option two are there on imaginary axis only one pole is there in the left hand side of s plane but is it the correct answer in the none of the option you have one in none of the option you have one so therefore straight away i can reject this possibility i can reject this possibility only two possibilities are available to me by looking at these two possibilities i can say option a is the correct answer for this question and somebody told vh you are right we can do this with the uh, elimination of the options option a is the correct answer please let me know in the comment section why bow is the first person who told that yes we can go with the elimination of the option excellent very good why bow right like you and vh also told that very good appreciate those two people who has mentioned very accurately yes we can go with the option a the reason is this possibility doesn't match if you want to go with this possibility four are there on the right hand side two are on the imaginary axis one should be there in the left side then you need to go with the option only one that is not there here right so therefore either this or this must be correct answer here clear okay okay right tarun no problem so what is the correct answer for this is it clear to all of you or not please let me know in the comment section guys this question we took some time but really a good question right we should appreciate good questions and move forward <coughs> tarun vaibhav akhil and shriyans satya sri please let me know all of you are clear with this vh yes or no option a is the correct answer for this question we have gone with the elimination of options such as three, I understand that you have done the mistake. It's okay, no problem. Let's move forward. Mistakes quite naturally it happens. No one in the universe will not be able to commit no mistake, right? Yes, only such as three is saying. What about Tarun, Vaibhav, and Shriyans, VH? Everyone of you, please respond. <laughs> this question is clear. We have seen three possibilities. Out of that, there is no chance for the poles to be on the imaginary axis because if that is the case, you will not have single uh, one. In the options, if you have one then you might really look into that clear so well right next so 24 the loop transfer function is this very good so find the value of k for which the system is marginally stable wonderful marginally stable means we must get all zero row right so let's form the characteristic equation for that so 1 plus g of s into h of s is equal to 0 guys 
increase the speed we are going slow i guess still we are at 25th question only first s into s plus 2 into s plus 8 plus k into s plus 11 that must be equal to 0 therefore we can say this as s into s square plus 10s plus 16 plus k s plus 11k 11k that is equal to 0 i think this question we can solve from the route or, i mean root locus also in root locus it is the value of k where the poles are there on the j omega axis wow wow 160 160 160 what a what excellent right so it will be like s cube plus 10 times of s square plus 16 plus k whole into s 16 plus k into s and <laughs> plus 16 plus 11k am i right so 16s plus k is fine so everything is perfect so then s cube we can say s square and s power 1 and s power 0 fat of it. so s cube 1 and then 16 plus k and then 0 here and then 10 here of course and then this is going to be 16 plus 11 times of k and then this is going to be 0 here correct so please <laughs> everyone of you look at this so 10 into 16 plus k minus 16 plus 11 k divided by 10 here and rest of things are 0 here last one will be anyway 16 plus 11 k now if i want to get a, a marginally stable system you must have all zero row here correct internal product of outer product okay okay fine fine so that logic i will tell you later but this is a classical procedure, right? So, because a lot of students don't know, that's why, right? So, yeah, 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 I understand Sri Hans, correct. This is a straightforward question, easy question, I agree that, right? But this is the standard procedure. If you look at, we require to get all zero row here. How do we get that? I understand Sri Hans, but a lot of students might not be knowing that. That's why I'm using this procedure. 10 into 16 plus k minus 16 plus 11k. But let us see whether you all people are correct or not right it must be 0 so how we can say 160 plus 10k minus 16 and minus 11k that is equal to 0 what is the k value k value must come like 144 all of you are getting the same answer with your basis value of k is 144 shriyans yes yes 144 those such as 3 y 160 and ashok y 160 please be careful because the simple questions can change your game right so instead of getting into IASC Bangalore, you will go to NIT Calicut. Okay. So a single question can change the game. Never and ever underestimate any question and never feel overconfident. Clear? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Clear. Right. Now let's go to the next concept that is root locus. Well, we came to the fourth chapter. So let's get into the next question. 2020 ka question. Instrumentation stream. Read it first. The loop transfer function of a negative feedback system is given by g of s into h of s is equal to something where k is greater than 0 the value of k at the breakaway point wow remember you are not required to calculate the value of breakaway point you require to calculate the value of k at breakaway point right 160 you know anywhere we are sir how did you get 11 for 11k anywhere in we have done the mistake here look at that so s into s plus 2 into this so it is just 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 hold on for some time every one of you please read the uh, this one because there is some conflict here let us finish that s into s square plus 10 s plus 16 this is absolutely okay s is there and then k s plus 11 that is also fine very good equated to 0 then s cube plus 10 s square plus 16 s plus k so this is perfectly all right plus oh oh okay 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 uh yeah my second calculation mistake right 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 why no one is saying this yes 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 there is a small calculation mistake thanks once again to you that is here 16 into yes that is okay here just only 11k correct this is only 11k yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Bharatras. correct 11k 11k right 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 so <laughs> here 1 and then 16 plus k correct and then 10 and 11 k and 0 so this is going to be 10 into i think now you people are correct i guess 
11 times of k divided by 10 and then s power 0 11 k lucky guys those who have solved 144 maybe you also followed me the same way so the characteristic equation mistake you have committed i guess right so very good very good very good excellent nice 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 so 10 into 16 plus k right minus 11 k that must be equal to 0 so k will come now it is 160 wonderful guys love you right k is 160 right tarun excellent excellent outstanding outstanding good so k is equal to 160 so our answer is 160 i think those people who gone with the shortcut they got the correct answer at starting itself i guess right we followed the basic math and basic procedure but still we end up with the wrong because of calculation mistake thank you very much Bharat Raj. thank you very much tarun nice 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 to see your energy even though i am feeling tired after looking at your energy, I am getting motivated. <laughs> okay, right. Let's get into the root locus concept. The first question. Look at this. So, they are asking what is the value of k at breakaway point. First of all, we need to get the value of breakaway point. How do we get the breakaway point? So, form the characteristic equation. What about characteristic equation is equal to s into s plus 2 into s plus 6 plus k is equal to 0. This is the characteristic equation. From here, k should be written like this, minus, what is this value? Uh, s into s square plus 6s plus 2s, 8s plus 12. That's it. So, moving ahead, k is equal to minus of s cube and plus 8 times of s square plus 12 times of s. Guys, look at this, all of you. Such as 3, is it okay? So, s square plus 8s plus 12 and then multiplied by s, s cube plus 8s square plus 12 s. Great. Then dk by ds must be equal to 0 for breakaway point. What should I say here? So, that would be like minus 3 times of s square plus 16 times of s plus 12 that is equal to 0. Good. Then when we solve this, what are the two points you are going to get here? Any one of you, can you help me here? <laughs> Any one of you, can you help me here? So, take two calculator into mode equation 5, right. So, we require a s square plus b s plus c, right. So, 3. So, the first is going to be 3 and the second is going to be 16 and then third is going to be 12 all the way and the first pole is going to be minus 0 0.90 right 0 0.9 and the second is going to be minus 4.43 where there is a possibility to have the breakaway point here that is the first question right people think that it is easy but relatively it's not easy it's how its own you know difficulty so please see here first of all right so now the poles are at what location open loop poles are at origin we have one pole right? and then at minus 2 and minus 6 also we have two more poles minus 2 here and minus 6 here three poles are like this in pole 0 configuration right <laughs> anyone what is the answer here so when we have three poles like this now tell me where there is a possibility to have the breakaway point you know that here there is no root locus root locus will be there between these two successive poles because if you see this segment yes this segment will be there on the root locus why right side to this segment number of poles plus number of open loop zeros number of open loops poles plus open loop zeros equal to odd number correct right side to this we have odd number of summation of poles and zeros yes therefore the root locus is there here and root locus is not there here right so right side to this segment we have two open loop poles which is the and no zeros so sum of the poles plus zeros it will be even again if you see carefully root locus will be here correct so therefore what should i say here obviously i would be saying that yes this root locus branch it will come like this it has to come like this so that means here there is a possibility between zero and minus two we might be having a uh, breakaway point so minus 0.9 is considered as a breakaway point so let me write down clearly minus 0.9 is going to be the breakaway point but guys be careful the question is not about breakaway point the question is 
the value of k at breakaway point this is very very important and most of the students they commit the mistake here you require to find the value of k at breakaway point how do we get that one so if you want to find the value of k i am asking what is the value of k at this point how do we get that one so if you want to uh, uh, if you want to have the value of k the k is equal to multiplication of the length from all the poles to that particular point so there are three poles here so i would be saying so easily here yes divided by there are no zeros if there are no zeros we will be writing in fact it should be written like modulus of z1 into modulus of z2 so on here clear so this is basically the way how we are finding the value of k that means you may ask a question sir what is the modulus of p1 means simple just look at the distance because this is the pole 1 and this is the pole 2 and this is going to be pole 3 draw the vectors or find the distance from the first pole to 0.9 that is going to be your modulus of p1 so how much that is modulus of p1 the distance from the first pole is simply 0.9 the distance from the second pole to here what is the distance p2 can you tell me what 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 is the p2 value that is 2 to 0.9 so it is 1.1 correct so 1.1 the distance from 2 to 0.9 is 1.1 and then the distance from the third pole to this point so that is modulus of p3 here so modulus of p3 or i would say the length here is going to be how much 6 to 0.9 means i could say 5.1 here 5.1 there are no zeros here if there are no zeros the denominator will be straight away it is equal to 1 in the numerator p1 what is the value of p1 0 0.9 1.1 and 5.1 0 0.9 and 1.1 and 5.1 and can anybody make it this and tell me the answer value of k value of k is how much wonderful to see even after almost three hours still 90 percent of the students are still with me 94 percent of the students great 95 percent of the students only two students have left it very nice great commitment 0 0.9 into 1.1 into 5.1 how much this will be this is coming down to be equal to 5.049 this is the answer for the k value right so the gain will be equal to k is equal to 5.049 that is the answer for your question how many of you got that one oh 5.04 shriyansh where it went wrong yeah 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 okay 5.04 is the correct answer next question 5.04 is the correct answer for this question let's get into the next question here 26 Question number 26. Guys, first, the characteristic equation of a system is s cube plus 3s square plus k plus 2 into s plus 3k in the root locus plot for the given system as the k varies from 0 to infinity, the breakaway point or break-in point lie within the range of dash. Breakaway point as well as break-in point, both they are asking. How to split from the characteristic equation? Characteristic equation is given as, let me take it here, s cube plus 3 times of s square plus, I would be saying this as a, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right, k s plus, <laughs> right, so I think it would be better to split like this, right, guys see here, it's interesting, so 2 s we can split it here, then we will be having 2 k, so I, <laughs> yes, 2 s we can keep here, and then, ks plus 3k ks plus 3k so k can be taken out then it will become s plus 3 that's equal to 0 wonderful i think if you write this way i have rearranged the characteristic equation very simple way not so many intellectual things here it's a very very common sense basic common sense then from here what is your open loop transfer function anyway let's consider unity feedback system then i can say g of s into h of s all the way or else let's consider unity feedback system in that case what is g of s here g of s is equal to k into s plus 3 divided by s cube plus 3 s square plus 2 s am i right guys look at this this is really a beautiful equation right make you have to rewrite the characteristic i mean from characteristic equation to the open loop transfer function that is g of s because I have taken h of s is equal to 1. If you don't like, you can take h of s. No problem. Right. So, from here, if you go ahead, 
still this will be like k into s plus 3 divided by s we can take outside then it will become like s square plus 3s plus 2 wonderful right 3s plus 2 then from there we can still write down g of s is equal to k into s plus 3 of course divided by s into s plus 1 into s plus 2 what a lovely question this is right lovely question right so in fact uh, people cannot solve this if you do not have a full clarity in the concepts so how many poles are there here pole 1 0 pole 2 minus 1 and pole 3 this is going to be minus 2 here correct and then we have only one zero here let me say that zero as minus 3 here only one zero that is at minus 3 here now let me go one step ahead and put it in the root locus plot here suppose if i put this in the root locus plot what we will going to have now zero minus one minus two let me say zero minus one minus two zero is here and then minus one is here and minus two is here clear minus one and minus two and there is minus three also guys please see we have a zero at minus three also this is the most beautiful topic so we will be having minus three here so let me say minus three is here clear minus three is here there is a zero now where there is a possibility to have break even point and break even point many of you might have calculated that now many of you might have solved this right most of you might be solving this like by taking dk by ds is equal to 0. That's why I am saying that your basics should be powerful. Kamal Pratap Singh is giving some answer. Let us see what is the situation. Where there is a possibility of break your point? First of all, the root locus will be there here. Because this segment of the real axis will be there on the root locus. Let me take this one. Yes, this segment will be there on the root locus. Right? And this segment will not be there on the real axis, uh, root locus. But this segment will be there on the root locus. Correct? So, what would be the possibility we are going to have here so there is only one possibility i would be seeing here this minus 2 definitely it has to go in this way and it has to close at minus 3 no other option right so then look at that this open loop pole should come like this and this pole should go away like this right so then they will be meeting at this point so definitely i am confident that we must have breakaway point here correct we must have breakaway point i am not really worried that what will happen after this i am really not worried to have right sir i have seen the videos your videos in baijus it is very very helpful for preparation uh, thank you very much allu allu it's really a, a very kind words i am very happy to see your lines from the chat box thank you very much i appreciate your efforts also right even though there is no physical interaction you loved the lectures because that's how all is, uh, all is about the teaching right so <laughs> right so now if you see the break of a point i don't know really what happens after that but right? whether it will go like this whether it will come like this that doesn't really matter but i'm sure that after that there will be a break of a point because the root locus branches will come out of the real axis out of the real axis so break of a point will be there between zero and minus one right so what would be the correct answer guys what you can take yes i can go for option a right now minus 1 comma 0 minus 1 comma 0 very good very good tarun option a is the correct answer but a lot of students what uh, they do is they will start calculating the breakaway point and they will see even after you calculate everything at the end you know the, you should know the concept to find the correct answer here clear minus 1 comma 0 is the correct answer for this question let's get into the next question of the day that is 27 wow right so it is electrical 2020 question look at the statement of the question consider a negative unity feedback system with the forward path transfer function big transfer function this is where k is a positive number the value of k for which the system have some of its rules or some of its poles on j omega axis wow this question you can solve by using the Routh Harvich criteria also or else you can even solve by using the you know because he told that negative unity feedback system with the forward path transfer function. What does it mean? It means that g of s is equal to g of s is equal to s square plus s plus 1 right. So it would be like s cube plus 2s square plus 2s plus k 
correct this is g of s right so then from there you must know what is the value of k where some of the poles are coming onto the j omega axis that is the meaning of that how do we get this one first of all we need to get characteristic equation if you want to do anything in root locus you must get the characteristic equation so most of the calculations will be associated with the characteristic equation so i'm right directly writing the characteristic equation otherwise let me take one more step here <laughs> for your benefit so 1 plus g of s into h of s is equal to 1 as there is no information about yeah unity feedback h of s is 1 so therefore characteristic equation could be written as s cube plus 2s square plus 2s plus k plus s square plus s plus 1 that is equal to 0 let me simplify the characteristic equation here s cube plus 3 times of s square plus 3 times of s plus 1 plus k that's it this is equal to 0 now he is asking that what is the value of k where the uh, the uh, i mean the roots are coming onto j omega axis k is equal to 8 Choudhury has given the answer very fast vishwajit Choudhury. nice 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 every question one of you are doing quickly love you guys that means everybody is actively participating in the session and you people are motivating me today right so even though i am feeling little bit tired but after seeing your huge response and interest moving forward so 1 plus k that is equal to 0 well so if you want to know what is the value of k where the roots are coming onto the j omega axis simple way is put s is equal to j omega putting s is equal to j omega means what you yourself is agreeing that yes poles are on the j omega axis let's put that and see what will going to happen j omega whole cube plus 3 into j omega whole square here plus 3 into j omega here and plus 1 plus k that is equal to 0 then moving ahead minus j into omega cube here minus 3 into omega square here and plus j into 3 omega plus 1 plus k all the way this is equal to 0 so just if you go ahead still what should i say 1 plus k minus 3 omega square minus 3 omega square and then plus j into omega if you take outside it will become like 3 minus omega square all the way that is equal to 0 clear so now right hand side we can write down this as 0 plus j 0 it's very easy actually right k <laughs> okay Tarun. internal product outer product right 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 so great so then we can equate this to zero here and equate this to zero so because real part and imaginary part if you equate it to zero both sides then i am very sure that three minus omega square could be equal to zero and omega square is equal to three number one right and then one plus k minus three omega square that must be equal to zero so k is equal to 3 omega square minus 1 that is equal to 3 into 3 minus 1 that is equal to 8 right so that is equal to 8 answer is 8 tarun devagan yes internal product is equal to optional product okay we will see that so k is equal to 8 so the answer for this question is 8 ananda is correct you are right of course once again this slide came those people who want to actually register for mock test or else you know test series or else even for the workshop you can all the way associate with the channel but just by subscribing please subscribe so that you will get the notifications right so let's get into the frequency response so the frequency response so frequency response all the way it is around you know where is uh, it plays a dominant role starting from the basics almost we covered four chapters right 60 percent of the syllabus is done 60% of the syllabus is done. Now tell me Manoj and Ashok, Anand, Teja, every one of you, how many of you are still energetic? I am seeing the drop of only 4 students, 4 to 5 students in the chat box. Guys, are you still energetic? Good, 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 good. Right. Let's quickly go to the question. <laughs> yes. Here there are some repetitions are there in the questions, but let's see. The closed loop transfer function of a control system is given by C of s by R of s is equal to 1 divided by s plus 1. For the input R of t is equal to sin t, the steady state response C of t is dash. Right? I am back, sir. Very good, Hamant. Excellent. Such as 3. Wow, wow, wow. Yes, sir. Continue. Tarun. Lovely. Lovely to see. See, see, before answering this question, I would like to explain a concept first. 
So basically, whenever we have any system that may be G of S or T of S, amplifier, circuit, whatever it may be, any system, if you apply a sinusoidal input, so sinusoidal input, X of T, let me say, and let me call this as Y of T here. Clear? If X of T is a sinusoidal signal with some amplitude like A into sine, frequency is omega I into T, plus the phase is input phase, then at steady state, <laughs> at steady state, please try to remember this point. This is a very, very important concept. Most of the engineering concepts requires this thing. At steady state, Y of T will have some amplitude B into sine. The same frequency will be there even in the output, but with the different phase. I hope all of you might be knowing this one, right? So that means if you apply the sinusoidal input at steady state, you will be having the sinusoidal output only. At steady state, you will be having sinusoidal output only. Clear? So therefore, what should I say here? So we require to know what is B. What is the relation for B and A? The amplitude of the output at steady state equal to amplitude of the input and the amplitude of the system. That is G of J omega at omega is equal to omega in operating frequency, radian per second. What about the output phase here? The output phase is the input phase plus the phase of the system that is phase of g of j omega at omega is equal to omega i radian per second hope you understood this one clear hope you got this point now look at the beauty of this he himself is saying that in this present context g of s is equal to 1 divided by s so let me write down here 1 divided by <laughs> 1 plus s so therefore I can write down G of J omega as equal to 1 divided by 1 plus J omega here and then magnitude of the system is equal to how much? Magnitude of the system 1 divided by under root of 1 plus omega square. I am writing directly by pre-assuming that yes you all people know about this. Actually this is simple concept. I expected the answer long back itself. right? So if you substitute omega is equal to 1 then what you will going to get here? So, because why I am taking omega is equal to 1? If you see sin t, so it says that the amplitude a is equal to 1, 1 into sin t. So, the input frequency is equal to 1 radian per second omega t, right? So, omega is equal to 1 and the input phase is equal to 0 degree. Please guys, please try to keep this in the mind. Very good, very good, very good. A lot of students are giving correct answer. So, it will be 1 by root 2 number 1 because when they substitute Input signal frequency omega is equal to 1, you will get 1 by root 2. What about the phase of this one? The phase of this function, phase of g of j omega, that is equal to, if this is a system, then the phase will be minus tan inverse of omega. Substitute omega is equal to 1, then minus tan inverse of 1, that is equal to minus 45 degrees here. Clear? So, therefore, in the final output, final steady state output, C of t could be written as, some b into sin omega t 1 into t plus the output phase correct so what is the amplitude here uh, only four students got the answer option d five very good which is this soudhary so b is equal to amplitude of input what is the amplitude of input here amplitude of input is 1 1 into the magnitude of the system 1 by root 2 here right so 1 into 1 by root 2 so i can say 1 by root 2 here and the phase output phase is equal to input phase is 0 degree and then phase of the system that is g of j omega you will be having minus 45 right pi by 4 so option d is the correct answer that means the amplitude of the system is uh, output is 1 by root 2 output phase is minus 45 therefore i can say option d is the correct answer wonderful to see lot of students have answered it correctly now let's move on to the next question this question, what of it, all of you do it? <laughs> Every one of you. EC 2020, Electronics and Communication Engineering. Let's see how many of you will do this fast. Now, R of T. R of T is equal to 5 into, one second, 5 into cos 3T. Correct? So, therefore, the amplitude of the input, I can say 5. And the frequency of the input is going to be 3 radian per second. And the phase of the input is going to be 0. So, first of all, you must recollect and reconstruct all the 
basically is what you require here sir i need this pdf how can i get this pdf right 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 no shriams if you get angle as a infinity you will not going to die or do anything else the angle how we will going to get infinity you will not going to get angle as infinity right shriams either it will be 0 minus 80 minus 220 minus 360 after that the repetition of the angle will come but how you will going to get minus infinity you will not get it ashok after this session we will share that we will share this in the telegram group if you are already there in my telegram channel then no need to do anyway even in the description also we will going to keep the pdf don't worry about that first focus this one then c of t could be written as a b into cos 3t plus phi naught at steady state at steady state only we can write like this okay at steady state only we can write down this right so therefore now what is b b could be written as c he has told you that c of t has given to you in fact look at the c of t they have mentioned it right so c of t i can say b is equal to 1 divided by root 10 cos of 3t minus 1.892 degrees oh my god they have given this only one answer madhu is saying 2 and somebody is saying some other value right so <laughs> first of all either we can do this question from magnitude or else phase also so the magnitude 1 by root 2 that is b this is b as we know that b is equal to a into modulus of the g of j omega right so let me quickly write down a is how much a is phi that is the amplitude of the input phi modulus of the system i am writing modulus directly by assuming that you all can do this 1 plus omega square just replace s is equal to j omega and then turn out to be magnitude you will going to get this one and then a square plus omega square clear so 5 into this total will be equal to b which is actually nothing but 1 by root 10 guys i need your help what is the value of a because omega we know already omega is already known to you what is omega omega is equal to 3 correct omega is equal to 3 radian per second any answer why bow i think after long time you have done the mistake i guess please verify why bow fast and accurate don't miss that right so when i keep omega is equal to 3 radian per second what should i say here 5 into r5 divided by root 10 into <laughs> a square plus 9 let's see why bow whether you might be correct or wrong even i am also getting doubt now so root 10 root 10 will be out here so then from there we can say under root of a square plus 9 is equal to 5 so i think a will be equal to 4 here a is 4 i guess how many of you got a is equal to 4 shriyans is the only one who got the a no i think madhu got the answer faster than everyone madhu now i am seeing the new name on the board here right so madhu got the answer very quickly compared to others that is option a sorry a 4 ashok 4 y by 4 good where did you done the mistake y by because 3.87 is almost close to 4 that means you have not done the calculation mistake maybe you might done the approximation mistake i guess somewhere please verify where you have done the mistake so a is 4 that is the correct answer 4 here sorry a is 4 clear now let's get into the next question next question is also good question this is electrical 2020 a stable real linear time invariant system with a single pole at p has a transfer function h of s is equal to s square plus 100 divided by s minus p with a dc gain with a dc gain of 5 okay the smallest positive frequency in radian per second at a unity gain is closest to what wow so first of all we must know dc gain should be equal to 5 so for that let us take h of j omega first h of j omega could be written as so if you substitute j omega it will become minus omega square therefore i am writing like minus omega square like this so 100 minus omega square plus j into 0 divided by this is s minus p so therefore i can write down minus p plus j omega right so i just replaced s is equal to j omega then we will get this one my intention is to see the magnitude here so the magnitude could be equal to 1 so if you take under root of real part square plus imaginary part square numerator is very straightforward that is 100 minus omega square divided by the in the denominator it will come p square plus omega square because minus p square naturally it will become p square minus p whole square it will become p square only correct so 
100 minus omega square divided by under root of p square plus omega square and we are expecting a dc gain of 5 wonderful right so let us see omega is equal to 0 then it must be equal to 5 dc gain means dc gain means the gain at the gain or the magnitude we can say at omega is equal to 0 radian per second this is the meaning of dc gain don't use any shortcuts here because there is a possibility of getting wrong answer so please don't use any shortcut let's go with the basics so it will become like 100 divided by p that is equal to 5 very good y bow too fast like q so p is equal to 20 so p is equal to 20 straight forward now let's fit uh, uh, to the next question what is the next question here so next question if you see he is asking at what frequency in radian per second unity gain comes good so again let's see the gain or the magnitude of the system that is modulus of h of j omega what should i say here 100 minus omega square particularly whole divided by under root of what should i say p square plus omega square p square plus omega square relax don't you know go back to the shortcuts look at what you require under root of 20 square 400 plus omega square and he is expecting he is asking what should be the value of omega where you will going to get one madhu for periodic signal they won't get final value how study how steady state value how steady state value no i didn't understood your question madhu can you break the question and explain to me or else uh, some letters are jumbling here and there that's why so this magnitude should be equal to 1 so tell me when there is a possibility that you will going to get 1 which value of omega so a lot of omegas are there i think uh, we need to substitute and verify so let's see the option a option a madhu for periodic signals they won't get the final value how steady state value good 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 madhu madhu i understood just see madhu only you see here when we apply a sinusoidal input here for a system what happens is whatever may be the system the output of the system will be like this assume that <laughs> it has a poles in the left hand side of the plane initially there will be a huge oscillation with a great amplitude after that it will come down and then it will going to make a sustained oscillation like this so as we will not going to have the steady state value we don't call it as a steady state output basically steady state output numerical value whatever you are going to have here this total band this total band whatever you receive here that is called as a steady state output means it may not settle but you will have output at steady state right so it's continuing it's continuing means in physical world yes i have a output but i cannot say what is the value but i can say it is oscillating between this value and this value correct so this value we will be taking as b and this value we will be taking as minus b and from here to here during the transient period this is considered as phi naught clear i think madhu only can answer understand what i am saying so in the output initially transient behavior will be there after that the oscillations will reduce 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 and then a sustained oscillation will be formed once the sustained oscillation is formed that is continued even for long time also even if you wait for one hour still you will be getting continuously correct that's why we call this as a steady state output clear so i think madhu have you got it <laughs> madhu have you understood so this means when we apply steady state uh, you know when we apply sinusoidal input for the system you will going to get the output like that in case if you have an unstable system remember that in case if you have unstable system then the oscillations will continuously increase then you cannot define the steady state value remember this madhu is it clear yes yes very good nice thank you then right option a let us put option a here because i forgot what is the question here 8.84 if you put option a let us see what will going to happen i also don't know because first time i am solving these questions 
8.84 whole square divided by under root of where is such as 3 and Shriyans. Why no answer from you in this question? Look at that. What is this value? Are you getting 1 or not? Just check it. Guys, check it whether you are getting 1 or not. I am checking with the option A. 8.84 whole square somewhere around 64, 65 you will be having. Numerator will be somewhere around 35. Here you will be having 65. Uh, 65 plus 400. 465. I think you will not get it, right? Hundred minus eight point eight five. Oh, twenty one is coming. Good, 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 good. Yeah, then fine. I think this will match, right? Yes, yes, yes. So it will match. It will come one because four hundred plus this almost equal to twenty one only. Yes, yes, guys, wonderful. Option A itself it is satisfying. <laughs> then great. Then we need not to work a lot here. I think option A satisfies means it's more or less it's fantastic thing. Right, so 8.84 is the correct answer. Let's get into the next question. Wow, next question will take a lot of time. I think let's see how we can do this one. Very good. So the magnitude plot of the transfer function V0 of S divided by VI of S of the circuit is shown below. The value of R is dash. <laughs> good, 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 good. So you require to find what is the value of R for this. Look at the question and understand it. What is given information first? From my point of view, you are getting the maximum value of magnitude at omega is equal to 200, 2000, correct? So maximum value of the magnitude is coming at omega is equal to 200 means omega r that is equal to 2000 radian per second. Resonant frequency, this is called resonant frequency. This is wonderful question. I think electrical 2021 question is good, right? So, omega r is equal to 2000 radian per second and he was saying that the maximum peak in dB, in dB, that is equal to how much? So, the maximum peak from the 0th value is 26 dB. Wow. This is also given. 26 dB. 26 dB. So, that means 20 log of peak value or resonant peak would be given as 26. Can anybody say what is MR now? First, MR. <laughs> right? We have to find the transfer function. Yeah, 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 yeah. We will get it. We will get it. First, try to understand what is given and then we will solve this. You continue to do that. Why, Bobby, you continue to do that? So, 26 divided by 20, 1.3. So, 10 power 1.3. It is almost around 20, 19.95. So, let me take this as a 20. Approximately 20 this is. Right, right. Resonant peak is 20. Good. This is resonant peak. This is resonant peak. Yes, resonant peak. Right. So, this is resonant peak 20. Such as 3, are you there in the chat box? Such as 3 and VH, Shriyans and all these people. Tarun, Bharat. Wow. Resonant peak is equal to 20. And resonant frequency is equal to 2000. So, we have some formulas, set of formulas for resonant frequency and all these things. Resonant frequency formula, what is that? Omega r is equal to omega n into 1 minus 2 times of zeta square. Usually, if you write like omega n into under root of 1 minus zeta square, then that is called omega d. That is called omega d. But when we write like omega n into under root of 1 minus 2 zeta square, then that is called as a omega r, right? So, that's value here it is coming like 2000 number 1 and resonant frequency, resonant peak. How do we write the resonant peak in general? This is also known to you probably 2 zeta divided by 1 minus zeta square. How much this value? That value is equal to 20. We already calculated that. So, these are the data that this data we got it from boded plot. Remember that this we got it from boded plot. Now, this formulas we have derived in the regular classes. In case if anybody want to know the formulas, please go to the recorded lectures. But how do we understand what is zeta and omega n? For that you need to solve the question here because there is a RLC circuit here. So V0 by Vs. How do we get that one V0 by Vs? So its impedance is SL and its impedance is 1 by SC here. Correct? So therefore V0 of S is equal to total supplied voltage VA of S. Correct. 
apply voltage division rule voltage across the capacitor is nothing but input voltage into impedance of the capacitor divided by the total impedance that is r plus sl plus 1 divided by sc it just takes few minutes of time so the transfer function could be written as equal to v naught of s divided by v i of s that is equal to 1 divided by look at that 1 divided by s square into lc plus s into rc plus 1 this is exactly what you will going to get it I take lc outside then if you take lc outside then the transfer function would be written as 1 by lc whole divided by s square plus r by l into s plus 1 by lc if you already know that is fine if you already know how do we calculate the second order system transfer function very advanced very happy right so sir how much left i think around another 10 questions are left <laughs> kamal first time you are asking the question great but i i really appreciate your patience till now right omega n square plus s square plus 2 zeta omega n into s plus omega n square now from this i can say first of all omega n is equal to under root of 1 by lc what is that value 1 divided by lc is how much look at that l is how much ci is how much 1 milli henry and 250 micro, uh, pico, micro farad right so under root of 1 into 10 to the power of minus 3 right and into c is how much 250 micro farad 250 into 10 to the power of minus 9 can anybody say what is the value of natural frequency here right so 1 milli henry and 1 by omega l into c l and c 250 into 10 power minus 9 you will be having so it will be <laughs> under root of 25 into 10 power minus 4 so let me write down under root of 25 into 10 to the power of minus 4 here so it will be coming to the numerator so therefore i could say 10 power 4 divided by 5 here so therefore 1 by 5 point 0.2 into 10 power 4 so i could say this itself it is going to be 2000 right 2000 wonderful vibo you enjoyed it right so that means resonant frequency and natural frequency both are meeting at the same point so omega r and omega n both are actually same that is the meaning of the question so omega r is 2000 so that means if we equate this two because this is omega r so now it's coming as 2000 so i think that will not solve our purpose right i think from here we need to estimate the zeta value can you please tell me what is the zeta value anyway I think calculation of omega n is not required here. So just look at the zeta value and tell me omega r and omega n both are going to be 2000 only. That is the meaning of this. So zeta value any one of you? Guys can you catch what is the zeta value? Why bow? What is zeta? Waiting for your answer zeta value. Value of damping ratio is 0 0.025. Good. So if you solve this then he is saying that you must get 0 0.025 guys please verify with the vibo ones zeta is equal to 0 0.025 right zeta is equal to 0 0.025 great so zeta is equal to 0 0.025 omega n is known to us this is your r by l right so this is your 2 zeta omega n s correct this is 2 zeta omega n therefore after a lot of effort what i can say here is Yes, we got the calculation and everything is fine. <laughs> omega n value also we came to know. Zeta also we know. All are fine. Let me say, just give me one second time. So, omega n is equal to 2000 radian per second. And 2 zeta omega n is equal to r by l. Let us make this one. r by l. And then zeta equal to r divided by 2 times of omega n into l. Right? so <laughs> sorry we actually require the value of r right so oh, one second so value of r we required so from this we can say r is equal to two times of zeta into omega n into l so what should i say here two times of zeta how much is the zeta 0 0.025 and omega n 2000 and what is the l l is 1 milli henry 1 into 10 to the power of minus 3 can anybody help me in the value here guys tarun tarun and vh triance ashok <laughs> please tell me what is the answer 
this is the lengthy question sir yes tarun i agree but actually i made it lengthy because most of the students they know this transfer function but they need to answer that because we cannot neglect this as it is a lengthy question because as far as my experience is concerned lot of students by looking at this diagram they will drop it they will not touch this touch uh, trust me they will not touch it okay so tarun is giving yes so if you multiply all these things 2 into 2 4 4 into 0 0.01 uh, so i think 0.1 very less right so 0.1 ohm good yes because zeta value is low means obviously the value of resistance is very less 0.1 very good very good ashok finally this is going to be 0.1 good question na how many of you liked it really good question right i liked it i really liked it it's a good question lengthy ho sakta hai some questions will be lengthy naturally they will be lengthy 0.1 good right so that's it <laughs> so we will be having frequency plots it takes another half an hour for me if you are with me we will see how much we can complete in the next half an hour okay so it's going to be a longest class so four hours but tomorrow onwards you will not going to have this much of lengthy class please mind that tomorrow onwards you will be having one or two hours of sections only today i'm not available so i'm taking i mean tomorrow i may not be available that's why i'm taking a little bit lengthy session so can i start the frequency response plots now the very first question because I have found that the frequency response plots are relatively easy. So let us look at this question. For an LTI system, the Bode plot of its gain as illustrated in the figure is shown below. I think we have another uh, 32, 33, 34, 35, 37. Oh my God. 50 questions. Right? So we have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Right. So we'll do one thing guys. So frequency response plots, right? Wow, wow. <laughs> now you have to tell to me, right? I think another 20 questions are there. It will take minimum one and a half hour time. Now you let me know. If you want us to have one more session, we will have it. It is up to you, okay? You completely tell me because it's almost around three and a half hours. It's a lengthy session. If you want me to complete, I'll complete by taking another one and a half hour session. Or if you say, We'll go for one more session on control system. We'll go for one more session from the frequency response plot. That means Bode plot. Yes, sir. Drop. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. Okay, Vaibo. Tarun. <laughs> right. So, yes, I can understand because you people have applied your mind and you are continuously working. There are three and a half hours is really a big session. Right. So, because earlier we used to take like seven hours or eight hours offline sessions. That is, yes, yes. Such as three, one more session. Guys, other students. Ashok draw <laughs> right so such as three Vaibhav, Tarun all you sincere students are requesting me to have one more session fine we'll have one more session no problem no problem then fine Tarun Devagan yes Bharat Raj okay we'll have one more session to discuss about the frequency response plots and all other things right the like state space analysis compensators and controllers there are three more parts are there frequency response plots means Bode plot Nyquist plot polar plot and then compensators and controllers Followed to that, we do have state space analysis also. And even a lot of questions came from this particular area. So that's why I want you to be fresh and listen properly. So no problem, we will going to have one more session, right? So we, <laughs> we will be having one more session. So first of all, before going to wind up the session, please let me know all of you have really done extremely well. Keep the same momentum, keep the same energy, keep the same enthusiasm for the upcoming sessions also because you will have a great team here and great faculty everybody will going to take everything so deeply don't miss this opportunity because if you are trying to solve the pyqs by yourself you will be so lazy and you will not work out all the questions but when you are doing with the group then automatically you will do with a lot of energy right with the uh, interaction hope you really enjoyed this session how many of you enjoyed this session please let me know Vaibo really enjoyed a lot sir this is a wonderful session thank you sir thank you very much Vaibo. so i should appreciate you also because you guys are really having a great patience and sitting with me almost for three and a half hours really big achievement right so this itself it is very big more than a movie right so movie also it will be two to two and a half hours only but you are with me almost for three hours that's a great thing tarun thank you sir thank you very much right 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 thank you what about other guys tarun manos bharatras and Sachasri. have you enjoyed it good 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 excellent love you guys so 
tomorrow if i am available i will go with the frequency response plot from there we will going to start in case if i am not available because of any other reason you will be having the next subject and that will be continued okay don't worry about that as i promise you we will wind up this one or other day but whatever we have done today up to now that's really fantastic hope you guys really enjoyed it i have seen a very very good response from you at the same time i am requesting all of you please stick to the channel and go through all the things whatever is coming because pyq is like a ram band right so this is the final weapon that you are having in your hand at any cost don't miss the sessions all the best to you thank you very much thank you very much shians don't worry <coughs> don't worry attend all the sessions then you will be able to solve after one or uh, you know one complete week right so don't get demotivated once again all the best so be regular to the session as i promised you in case if i am available i will take otherwise some other faculty will start next subject we will meet after some time okay so guys take care all the best